All right. We are live. Let me just double check on our YouTube, actually, make sure everything is up and running. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, today, instead of some coaching, we're doing some, we're finally getting around to doing some Overwatch League review of the June Joust Finals. Um, this past week, we haven't had any games because uh, teams were taking a break right after finishing the finals. This was a pretty epic series between Shanghai and Dallas, of course. Went the full distance of seven games. <clears throat> and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through all of it today. Uh, I'm aiming to get through the first four maps today. But depending on how quickly we go, we might just do the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, really looking forward to properly taking a look at some of these compositions. Because this was like the epitome of... NA or like the West meeting the East, the the NA Dallas Fuel versus the uh, Korea Shanghai Dragons, uh, two different variants on a similar style of composition clashing uh, at the highest level for the first time. Every other game like leading up to these finals was like almost entirely one-sided. Every single game, even the upsets, looked very one-sided. Um, and it was a lot of comp differentials, a lot of different things. Uh, but in this series, two teams, were like it really seemed like they were playing at their peaks. Uh, and they really, went, they really went the distance on this set. So I'm really excited to take a look and see how everything looks down, getting a look in the replay viewer. Uh, I haven't looked at these games in the replay yet. I watched most of the full series live. It was like five hours long, so I, I don't think I caught the whole thing. But I caught the, I caught the finale of it, of course. Uh, so yeah, really looking forward to diving into this. So yeah, uh, with all that said, let's jump into game one. <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know or didn't follow the tournament up until this point, um, this composition, actually here, let me break out my pen tool. Uh, where are we? Come on, epic pen. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Okay, perfect. So this composition from Dallas, they were the ones who basically started this composition. And I don't know how true this is, but I think... Uh, so there's a lot of other compositions, um, especially in Korea, that were very similar to this comp. Uh, but instead of Lucio Moira, they would run on a Brig. Uh, and they would run other DPS, sometimes a hitscan DPS, like an Azure or McCree. Um, and it looked closer to something like a double bubble composition, or like maybe more comparable to the old school uh, Sigma and Ball compositions where you'd sort of have like your dive core, but then also you've had like your backline uh, long range threat core. Uh, and then Anna Brig just helped solidify that. Um, in North America, no one was running that because of how dominant Dallas was in this composition. People couldn't feel like they could keep up. So leading into this finals, uh, Dragons end up adopting the same support line, the same fast paced support line, despite playing a lot of Anna Brig in Korea and leading up to this match, um, a lot of teams felt that despite having more practice on the other composition, the speed and how aggressive you can go in this composition was just almost necessary for teams to pull out. So we're seeing Dragons pick up a bit of North American style here coming into this finals. Uh, but most notably, the biggest difference between two both comps, and I think for most of the games, the only difference, Fate is on the ball. And Fearless is on the Winston. And I think this is consistent for every map. So it's not like this is like a map-dependent pick. I think this happens in literally all seven of the rounds. And eventually, actually, Fuel end up swapping Fearless onto the ball, something he's, uh, as a player I know, is less comfortable on. Like, he's known for his Winston play. Um, so it's very interesting to see, like, how that slight of a difference in sw solely swapping the main tanks, uh, two main tanks that do somewhat similar jobs on top of all that, uh, have such... An impact in terms of how the team plays. I'm just gonna turn this down a touch. All right. So yeah, uh, I think without saying anything else, let's just jump into game one. I'm not sure. Did dragons actually TP anywhere? They TP'd like out of spawn. Was this really worth it? Like. They're actually they're slower than fuel because they didn't just speed boost and now they're they're waiting for the reaper. I guess it gets ball to point faster, but 
Fleta absolutely dominating Sparkle. Um, there's a not a lot of like, so this these compositions are a lot. How do I how do I want to word it? Um, people compare it to goats a lot because of how often they like to all engage together as a six man dive kind of thing and just roll over the enemy team. Obviously, in a mirror matchup, you can't just hit gas twenty four seven. Uh, because the enemy team can just absorb that and then do it right back to you. But uh, the one hero in these compositions that has more flexibility than anyone else is the Echo. Obviously not being constrained by uh, needing to walk on the ground like everyone else, uh, but also just having the most range damage, having the most burst potential, and having some of the best playmaking ability in all in one hero uh, is pretty insane for this composition because it gives them a lot of flexibility. So Fleta being able to identify a moment to punish Sparkle like this Let's go to his POV and see what that looked like. So yeah, he's, he's looking pretty non-committal right now. Since there's no hit scan in the game, like, you can play this aggressively with Echo with basically no repercussions. The worst that's going to happen is the enemy Echo comes to duel you or the enemy Diva comes to isolate you when you don't have your shift up. Fleta in this position, very easy to fall back, very non-committal, and also completely out of LOS. That fuels firstly thinking about getting onto backline, not thinking about dealing with Fleta, Fleta finds it easy sticky. Pretty interesting he was allowed to do that. I would have liked to send better scouting from Hanbin to deny that. Diva's job in this composition obviously is a lot of stability, dealing with aggressive DPS for the most part, Echo and Reaper both. This meta also notoriously hard to tell who's kind of winning in a lot of situations, given how back and forth the fights can be and how much sustain there is. So a lot of times people end up going very low, like as we're seeing from Fuel, but actually Fuel is now ahead in this fight because they haven't committed anything, because Fearless is now back into the fight. Uh, they can sort of absorb that pressure, push back. Fate without his grapple available might go down here, but he has it available, never mind. Fielder builds the first Coalescence, usually the first ult scene on either side in this matchup. And, I mean, this this wasn't even really a team fight. It didn't look like a team fight. It was literally just like a lot of a couple picks going back and forth, uh, and then to a point where dragons have to get out. Walking on the ground at so 2016. Yeah, imagine, imagine being constrained by legs in Overwatch. So what what Fate is trying to do here? Uh, he's trying to be like. An external presence that which is something you can only do on ball that you can't do on winston if, if you can run around the map like this as winston uh as soon as your jump gets forced out you're punishable especially when the team has speed and this much damage right so by playing ball fate can do a number of things that fearless can't he can pressure the map more you can play almost like a tracer as ball in fact you can play more risky than a tracer because it's a lot easier to survive you're less vulnerable to cc to one shot abilities to enemy dps uh it's easier to go get health packs all around the map, these kind of things. Um, and he can leverage the the objective by doing that. So what Fate's doing by over being over here, like he hasn't even touched the point yet, or I guess he's he's mildly touched the point, but look at this force rotation that he's created from Dallas. This means instead of having to fight out of this choke as Shanghai and, and worrying about fighting here or fighting here, now all they have to worry about is are these chokes and fighting to the point. So it's like they're skipping a step by being able to leverage the objective in this way. Uh, and of course if Fuel don't respect what Fate's doing, they risk flipping the point. Or as well, they risk, uh, like if they only send one member back, they risk that member getting dueled out by Fate. Fate's pretty good on ball. There's a lot of people I mean, outside of the DPS lineup or other tanks. Um, like they, if they just sent Lucio back or something, they might lose that duel. But <clears throat> uh, the biggest thing too is once Fuel is forced into this rotation, this is now a potential engage opportunity from Shanghai to collapse onto them. This is exactly the type of fate setup Fate wants uh, Fuel to be in so that he can roll through Fuel into his team, get support, avoid dying, get healing, all this kind of stuff, while his team is creating or is using the space that Fate's created to find an engage opportunity. So I'm hoping that's what we're going to see. We might just see another really slow fight that revolves around ultimates. I'm guessing Izayaki is going to open up with Cole. Oh, actually, we open up with Mines. So yeah, look how awkward this space is for Fuel now. Look how completely surrounded they are. And this looks like quote-unquote bad, but this was actually like 
interestingly enough, this is a big part of Dallas's fight plan is to just sometimes completely ignore objectives, stay together, and they, they might even try to kill Izayaki here. This is pretty unusual gameplay. This is more similar to GOATS than this composition kind of needs to be. Okay, I'm just like, they do end up losing the fight. So Dallas, what they were trying to do, or what I assume they were trying to do, obviously I'm not in their heads at this moment, is they want dragons to think this engages in their favor. And by a lot of, for a lot of reasons, this engage is in, in dragons' favor. They've wrestled control of the objective. They have forced Dallas off of point. They have forced them to be surrounded by multiple threats. Um, unfortunately for dragons, Fleta does end up going down to Sparkle. He gets the, the revenge kill. Uh, but what Dallas is trying to do here is bait an overextension. So up to this point, like Dallas kind of gave up their positioning on point, gave up their priority to engage um, in the hope that dragons are going to see them like corralled into the space and then over aggress into them. So they've spent resources coming out of here, coming around to point and these kind of things. It would take even more to continue pushing into fuel. And I think what their game plan is, is just to have such a strong core defense that they can punish any even mild overextension immediately. That's why they stay together. Because if they were all off doing individual things, which we see other teams doing, like we see Lip and Fleta doing it during a lot of team fights, um, then they wouldn't be there immediately to punish someone like potentially Fate who overextends, or maybe a Moira who's coalescing. You need all of these members together, all of that damage layered on top of each other. Um, but... As we see, dragons, uh, A, don't overextend into this garden area, but also B, have ultimates for days to use in this fight. So they are now wrestling control of point. Now, dragons again doing a similar thing. Once they know they've won the fight, all they have to do is like regroup, not play around each other. Or sorry, play around each other, not like play split up around objectives and things like this. So you see Lip and Fleta like re- uh, regroup with the team with the tanks and then I'll push out to six but usually for the most part from what I remember uh, Lip and Fleta will be going for a lot of plays themselves a lot of poke sticky plays a lot of TP plays as Reaper This is a kind of another thing too where like Fuel play this comp so weird man so They made this whole they sped from here I think and they sped with the intention. So, to, to understand why this concept is good, um, this is more about defying Dragon's expectations than it is about making a good play. So, they're speeding from here to point. A lot of teams, without a larger fight plan, would end their planning there. Would be to wrestle control the point, kill whoever comes to touch. That kind of thing. If Fuel does that, that sort of shallow or one-step plan, it gets them control of the objective for the time being, but then people like Fate come in and contest the point. Fate never dies. They build up a new ultimate, or they throw in something like Diva Bomb. They don't have speed to get away from Diva Bomb. They have a re-engage duel. So that was that's what Dragons is trying to do right now. Fate's trying to disrupt them as they're touching the objective, because now they've already used their speed. Maybe they've committed Monkey Jump, I didn't see, or Diva Boosters. These are things that can be reasons for them to go aggressive. But Fuel isn't done here. Fuel is immediately ready to push into garden here and they're ready to commit coalescence so like and uh, the copy of course so they they started their engage back here and it's ending all the way over here to kill lucio and if you're lee J gone you're like in your you're in your team comms right now thinking to yourself okay they use speed we're going to aggress on point it's our turn to play the game they've used their juice they've hit their gas pedal they've they've done everything they were planning to do for this rotation it's our turn next and this isn't even like an aggressive position. Look how far away he died. And and Fuel is still managing to have the gap. So this is the idea of like, this is how much faster Dallas plays compared to a lot of teams. They're not just thinking about what's in front of them or what their, um, what like the first part of their plan is. They're thinking like, I mean, obviously they weren't like back here thinking, okay, Lee Jagon's over here. We're going to wrap around the entire map and, and hit him or anything like that. But they're they're moving in this way knowing that this isn't the end goal and then they're keeping themselves open it's like oh i see a lucio over here engage now with cole and then they all commit to it and there's not a moment's hesitation sparkle commits the duplicate 
uh, and they just finish that kill extremely fast. It's never your turn with fuel. Exactly. And then, obviously, with that advantage, and with these ultimates going out, uh, they have the confidence to bring it back to the point. And again, they, they stay as one big group. Terrible diva bomb. But Sparkles... Wait, was that Sparkles diva bomb? I thought that was uh, Voids for a second. Oh, no, that was Fleda's diva bomb. Okay, that's I thought it was Dragons, but then I, I saw Fleda hadn't used his bomb. Or, sorry, Void hadn't used his bomb. Uh, so I don't know what the plan was for that bomb, but Sparkles bomb, again, on point. And look how spread out now Shanghai's become. Because half their members were like, okay, we're recommitting. We're going back in. They've already used everything. And then they're like, oh shit, they're over here. Okay, we got to go over here now. We see Fate. We see uh, Fleta committing over here. Oh, but some of us are seeing them go back to point. And it's causing so much chaos. And Fuel doesn't even need to do anything crazy. They just need to go fast. And it, it's, it's catching dragons completely off guard. It seems like in this fight. Their attention is all over the place. You see Lip going for a play. You see Fleta going for a play. But realistically, no one has an edge in this team fight. Now they're just stalling, of course. They do still have control of the objective. Get as much as you can. But yeah, Fuel, like, it's crazy because they're, they don't look like they're playing good. They just look like they're playing fast, which is interesting for this composition, of course. Uh, but a lot of other matchups in this composition have come down to mainly the DPS players, mainly the Lips and the Fleta's, being able to find advantages in the neutral, being able to find a sticky bomb kill, being able to find a TP play that the team engages with. And it's sort of like more standard Overwatch, where your tanks create space, your DPS make plays, supports keep everybody up. Fuel are playing... They're like, um... They're like the Megazord in Power Rangers, where they all just, like, turned into one giant mecha, and they move together as one huge unit and just bulldoze over the enemy team. And it's... It sounds simple when I explain it like that, but it's extremely hard to get six members with six different brains uh, all talking at the same time and all coordinating for the same objective in the blink of an eye. And that's what we saw on this kill only Jay gone. They, this was easy, this rotation is easy to call. Okay, speed to point. That's easy. Being able to identify a target, call its location, have all six members commit, not overcommit ultimates. They used coalescence. Uh, and and uh, duplicate. Maybe this was pre-planned before, uh, but they didn't use like six ults at the same time for a Lucio or something like that. Uh, and then once they killed their target, they regrouped again. They didn't like split up and do a bunch of individual things. Uh, they didn't try to keep on making individual plays. They stayed together. They kept Fielder up while he's coalescing. And then it's just slow roll target to target to target. How do you control all of this chaos? That Well, the thing is, what Dallas is doing, like, in inherently isn't strong. So, what they're doing is they're punishing unpreparedness, and they're punishing slow play. There's no one on Dragon's team that should be caught out by what Fuel's doing, but because they're thinking of their own plans, because they're thinking of what they're trying to do as a team as well, because they're trying to make individual plays, maybe, um, it opens them up for even, like, the slightest misstep. So what dragons need to do is actually just play slower, in my opinion. They shouldn't try so heavily to make individual plays with Lip and Fleta. They shouldn't try so hard um, to find the perfect engage. They shouldn't commit as hard when they haven't seen a better opportunity, like we saw when uh, Fuel went here. They were already starting to recommit, but then all of a sudden Lee Gon's dead, and then no one's on point from Dallas. Yeah, the Dallas Megazord Fuel, exactly. I'm a little curious from that engage. I'm assuming this this play from Fearless is a soft dive, which is weird to say, because this is a very aggressive dive, right? But he's not looking to commit here, and I can tell he's not looking to commit because his team isn't looking to commit. They're diving in to build Primal, to get some ult charge, to build Duplicate, to get some ground for Doa, to try and make this TP. But if they, if they don't find anything immediately, they back up. And this is causing an overreaction from dragons. Again, this Death Blossom is only hitting Fearless. Not only that, but Hanman's Matrix was mainly on him. And now, Dallas is just like, okay, nope, see ya. You guys can use your ults, we'll just be on point. Don't mind us. I mean, I guess Fearless, now that he's in Primal, he could do whatever he wants, including kill Fleta. So, unfortunately, because... 
Because Sparkle does go down there, I don't think they have the damage to clean this up, but maybe they do? I want to see how this fight actually turns out before I say too much more. There's so much going on. This is this is the chaos of this this team comp that and look, but still even amongst all the chaos like Dallas is still looking more together. And it's making it harder and harder for dragons to keep up. So you notice how Dallas was very sort of in then out. Shanghai is more like in and then kind of stagnates in the same space. When they were committing here, they didn't move around too much once they went to point. So let's just look at the overlay. Let's just look at the pretty colors between blue and white. Look at the different space they can test. Okay, a bit further back. Okay, so we're starting around right here. This is Fuel's opening play. Lip goes for the, the TP play, and he does kill Sparkle. So that's huge. Um, obviously... Flooding gets traded out by the Primal, but that's fine. So now, Dragons feel they have the opportunity to commit. Doa's used to Death Blossom. Uh, Echoes have been traded out. The Primal's coming to an end. We have a Diva Bomb, if you're thinking that we're Dragons. Um, we, unfortunately, don't have Coalescence anymore. But we should be okay taking this fight. At the very least, this should be an even fight. Now we're up. We kill Jexay. We commit the Bomb. Looking again at the colors... Dallas is now kiting even further. They're still decommitting, or I need to find a better word for the opposite of committing. Uh, they're bailing out of this fight, uh, and instead of this base, which is where Dragon is, is committing, there's like, okay, you can have the point, uh, but if you try to come and kill us, we're gonna we're gonna answer back and we're gonna punish you. And these are the little overextensions that get um, they get lip punished. I mean, fate there just committing the slam onto no real target. Look how split up. Um, dragons have become now. They're all over the point, let alone lip going down. Fate committing over here onto the Moira. No one else can follow that up. The bomb was committed. No one died because Dallas had already bailed. Uh, the supports are here isolated. Now Dallas, all, all they have to do is stabilize, stay together. No one's at risk of dying. They have the ultimate advantage with, with Coalescence ticking. They tried to go onto Lee Gone there, I think, but the boop from Void was really good. Again, the beat comes out, but look how it's kind of like this whole thing from Shanghai where they're having trouble committing or getting back in or dealing with the coalescence or whatever it is. And then Dallas quickly regroup. I think they quickly regroup from what I saw. Yeah, look at their core staying together. Sparkle going around finishing kills because he's got free space. And dragons are just kind of like these mosquitoes buzzing around the head of fuel and they're just getting smacked down one by one so at this point it's not like fuel's doing anything crazy they just look more coordinated as a team retreat yeah that's a good one <laughs> Score. To one. so again the way you counter this playstyle from fuel in inherently isn't anything you need to do yourself you just need to it's sort of like playing against a doomfist when you're playing against a doomfist you don't need to outplay the doomfist you just need to wait for him to blow his cooldowns if he commits his e his uppercut and then punches out you can play the game for like six seconds without him being a threat or better yet if you can punish him during those times if you have cc flashbang sleep orissa halt these kind of things and you can stun him and punish that you don't need to worry about like not dying as long as you're staying together during this rotation so whenever fuel's looking to go aggressive Dragons just need to make sure they're not also making an aggressive play at that time. Because if you're, again, using the comparison of Doomfist, if you're playing against a Doomfist and you as like a McCree are going for a flank fight play during that time, like, yeah, you're going to die to Doomfist or your team's going to die to Doomfist because you weren't there to flash them. So to survive Fuel's Engage, Dragons just need to be ready to absorb without looking for an aggressive play from one of their DPS or from Fate at the same time. And the hard part of that is actually reading when when and where Dallas is going aggressive. Because as we saw, they're, they're willing to be wherever they want during a map. They're not obviously committing anywhere. They're always moving quickly. How does Izayaki die there? Hold on. He doesn't have the fade up because he faded across the bridge. I don't know why 
he felt the need to be here before anyone else. And maybe he wanted to like be a, a bait target for the dive so that Fate could swing in from behind them and boop them in, but that was just uh, a little disrespectful. Oh, Jexa goes off the map, that's unlucky. Sparkle kills Lip. It's much harder for dragons to get through without anything like Winston Bubble to rely on for a specific location. Their opportunity windows are much shorter because they have the ball, typically speaking. Uh, I mean, this is typical for dive teams, and this isn't really a dive comp, but typically speaking, the difference, one of the differences, I should say, between ball uh, and Winston is with ball, you have like more opportunity windows, uh, but they're not as high peaks. With Winston, you have less opportunity windows, uh, but they are sort of more impactful with stuff like the cleave damage and with the bubble to support your team. Not to mention with primal, that can be like a huge engage tool. Um, so what that means for dragons, again, is they need to be a lot pickier with their engages, which ones they actually commit to, but they're going to have more chances uh, to sort of roll the dice than Dallas do. Another big reason for ball over Winston um, is, well, there's there's like 10 different reasons, but for this matchup specifically, there's a couple reasons that are worth going over. So one is the displacement. Um, if, if fuel is going fast and you can just stop that with rolling through them as a hamster and saving every other cooldown, not needing to speed yourself, not needing to fade away, not needing to boost, not needing to wraith, not needing to do all these things, that is such free value from ball that it's insane. And that means a lot of the time, that's an opportunity to go aggressive. Because if you take the wind out of Dallas's sails and they just get booped around, they get slammed, these kind of things, all of a sudden they're down speed boost. Maybe they're down other things like orb or fade or matrix or whatever. Um, and then dragons have an opportunity to speed in, use an ultimate, whatever it is, to try and punish that play. Instead of trying to absorb it, they can counteract it with just ball. Um, another reason is if Dallas aren't making an aggressive play, Fate can play the map. This is something we talked a little bit before. If Dallas are just hanging out here, like baiting you to cross this bitch, baiting you to go white, Fate just touches the point. And then Dallas has to send at least one person, or probably multiple persons, since Dallas is uh, technically just one team with six heads, one character with six heads right now. Um, then they all come back to touch the point, and that's free space for his team. Another reason uh, is straight up just guns. You can do more in neutral as ball just by shooting your guns than Winston can at the moment maybe in overwatch 2 he can do more with his little rail gun uh but right now fate has range damage which means even in like the 1v1 versus fearless if for whatever reason he's in that situation he will kill fearless unless fearless has primal or outplays him pretty heavily um and he will be able to th actively threaten people like doa people like sparkle that fearless wouldn't be able to do on the other side so fearless is a better or winston is a better team player uh but Hammond does more individually. And on top of that, the types of engages and the frequency of the engages you can create with these two tanks are, are pretty different. Those are the main reasons between Ball and uh, Winston. Uh, a big reason for fuel playing Winston, though, is obviously it's a comfort pick for Fearless, uh, and they play around it really well. And that that's possibly also why they've, they've sort of molded their style around staying so tightly as a team, because they want to play Winston. And they want to use Winston's resources for the team. Like, look at this bubble. It's shielding five people <laughs> when he goes in. And dragons do not want to spend the time shooting a bubble. They want to spend their time getting one-shots on, with Sticky Bombs and with Reaper. So, the thing again, if dragons can survive that hard engage from fuel, be able to kite it out, not even necessarily punish it immediately, but if they survive enough of those, Dallas is going to run out of gas. Um, and then eventually someone's going to be punishable. But if they try to commit like this, I really don't like this from, from dragons. So the dupe on D.Va comes out. Their main healing is down, which is bad for Dallas, but oh my god, the remit kill and the bomb. So the problem with engage- this is so hard to spectate, by the way. I hate this map for spectating. I'm sorry to anyone watching. Um... The problem with engaging like this, if you're Shanghai, so they go in with mines. It's even a little bit before this, actually. They go in with mines. I mean, the slam is, I mean, it just doesn't do anything. 
ideally if you're slamming it's already at a time that your team is engaging like already these people in the air are being shot at or getting hit by sticky bombs through this window or something that's not happening this is poor timing on top of that we mine after we slam in conjunction with coalescence mining coalescence is a very strong engage tool it denies and, cr and inherently creates a lot of space at the same time um coalescence is basically used as a cooldown in these compositions um where it's just a button that says you have more resources than the enemy team you now have more healing and more damage than the enemy team just off one ultimate and it's not something that's going to win the fight but if you let it happen for the full duration and you don't do anything in response to it you're going to lose the fight you're going to be bled out mines at the same time force you to make some sort of movement typically uh, either an over aggressive or overly defensive movement so if dallas react wrong to this or they make split decisions like if winston decides to go aggressive and and uh, doha decides to fall back then this can be very bad for fuel but of course as we're seeing fuel is very coordinated doha tps through the mines is that what he did where did he go hey it's a cat on my desk come on buddy careful all right uh so yeah doa tps through the mines and gets on backline and so yeah like instead of like even thinking about the enemies engaged because again um dallas is better if both teams commit fully because of what i said about winston for the most part uh but because of also their coordination um and this engage was sort of half cooked too from fate it wasn't great they were planning on getting more value they were planning on playing to the human factor of like panic and disruption and split attention and these kind of things and that just didn't happen so dallas comes out ahead here their engage is huge the primal is huge the copy bomb is huge of course fearless dies but it really doesn't even matter that's kind of his job in some regards especially when uh, when doe and spark are all both alive it's kind of his job to just buy them as much time as possible and sometimes that means dying now dragons are coming in slight alt advantage with the reaper alt reaper alt's a hard one to really call a strong ultimate in this comp though it kind of comes down to if you can bleed them out enough and yeah like dallas has no problem committing at the same time yeah, Reaper Ult just gets full matrixed. Fleta does find Jexa. Bomb doesn't find anything. This is the most scattered we've seen Dallas look. And it's costing them. So we're looking back. How did Dallas get so split up? So the beats come through. I think they were planning on committing into White Room, but at this time, because last time Dragons looked a bit slow, uh, and so they were planning on committing here. But their commit falls flat. This is... Dragons surviving fuels engage as much as it is fuel surviving dragons engage, uh, which benefits dragons the longer this fight goes. The Reaper Alt slows down Hanbin and Doa here, which means this call to go aggressive is now getting Jexa punished because not everyone could follow through. So actually really well timed Reaper Alt. I don't know how intentional that was, but it really cut off. So the plan obviously was here, commit here, gets cut right out in the middle by Reaper Alt nice job from lip and then people get split up picked off one by one sparkle isn't able to find an assassination doa goes down one by one they fall but this is a pretty hard map to retake but 99 is a pretty good number to be sitting at only mines on the table duplicates coming up This is, I would love to see Fate doing more, like, right now. If if we're playing ball over Winston, and we let them just match and engage on point, and we kind of meet them here, that's going to favor the Winston outside of other plays. So maybe Shanghai's play is to rely more on Lip and Fleta to make the plays during this time, when uh, Dallas is trying to go to point. But we've seen that not work out a couple times already. We're only on the second round of Koth. I would love to see more pre-fight disruption from Fate, 
and more willingness to commit aggressively. Like, be ready to fight them in this rotation. Have Fleta ready to, like, fly in right here and go for her stickies. Like, you don't need to commit, like, alts. Maybe mine should be fine. Uh, but you don't need to commit, like, duplicate and, like, send all six people over here. But, like, get something out of this so you're building more ult charge uh, and you're building more pressure out of the neutral. But another part of this is teams might just feel... Actually, here, let's watch this team fight first. Sparkle going really aggressive with the copy Diva. So, Shanghai absorbing this pressure really well, but Sparkle's doing so much work with his copy. And he even gets Reback. Primal's going in to extend. Oh my god, Primal gets two. Fearless is just insane. Did, did Doa even do anything that fight? He, he just ulted, but what was he doing? I, he was just playing point, right? Where's Doa? Okay, now he's TPing in. Oh, that's huge, actually. Blossom was committed there just to make sure the beat was cancelled. That's fine. You take that trade. And yeah, so, like, this is just showing, like... One... This is just a general rule for Overwatch, but if you're going to hold point, you're telling the enemy team that you have nowhere to kite to. Because it, anywhere you kite to is taking you off point, which is like absolutely fine for Dallas. They push them off point. They threaten to cap the objective. This inherently split Dragon's attention between surviving the dive and maintaining possession of the point. Uh, but on top of that, the amount of tools that Fuel had to go aggressive with, the, the Primal, the Copy, and the Coalescence, all let them go even deeper than uh, Dragon's was expecting to do. Just like we've seen before, the Primal killed the Lucio. The Death Blossom helped secure that kill, obviously. Um, even without committing all six members, like they usually duel, Fuel opted to keep some members on point, which I think was really good. They kept Hanman there to make sure point pressure was a thing. Uh, and it really just split the attention of the Dragon. Again, I would have loved to see more forward pressure from Dragons before they even thought about touching the point. Oh, Oh, get him, Sparkle. Oh, that's tragic. That's uncharacteristic of Sparkle. It's not going to matter, though. What we've seen from a lot of other teams playing this composition, or even the slower variant of it uh, in APAC region, is a lot of individual playmaking potential from the DPS. And a lot of games have kind of come down to which DPS chose the best moment to engage and which DPS got more value out of their kit in X amount of teamfights. This is not that case at all. This is Dallas out, like this is Dallas team diffing Shanghai. And again, the biggest thing we're seeing is really just Dallas looks more grouped and coordinated when they're moving, when they're committing to a specific location. And Dragons look like they want to sort of surround a target and make, in make those individual plays with their Echo, with their Reaper, um, and it's hard to say which one is better, uh, but this one looked better on Koth and definitely caught dragons off guard a lot of the time. At least like three to four fights were just dragons being caught off guard. Whether that was because they didn't leverage enough neutral pressure, they didn't scout out enough of what Fuel was doing, or they tried to punish Fuel too early when Fuel was still moving forward. Did these comps only work due to hero bounds, though? Yes, absolutely. Reinhardt destroys these comps. Hitscan, Tracer, destroys these comps. <laughs> um, it's it's hard to talk about the meta with hero bands, um, so I'm, I'm literally just talking in the context of the Doom Joust. Like, it doesn't make sense to talk about these comps in the context of no hero bands, just because who's to say these comps would even pop up if that were the case? Um, and... And yeah, it, it's just, it's too unpredictable. Maybe you could try running it, especially like in like contenders or lower level teams. Uh, but in Overwatch League, people would reiterate comps. I would assume at the very least with a Tracer. Uh, but if not, like the Rhine Diva comp is a similar variant to what Fuel is doing. And I think Rhine would do more than Winston is doing with this composition even still. Uh, but yeah going on to Volskaya here. So, we're seeing no change in compositions. This is going to be harder for Dallas, although 
I don't remember. Is this loser's choice? Um, I don't remember if the tournament was like first X amount of maps were, were default or only the first map. I think this is loser's choice. So this is Shanghai's map pick. And I don't, I mean, out of the two CP maps, I don't hate this, I guess. Uh, it's the most open concept two CP map. So it's going to mean fate has a lot of options to roll around find disruption, find cover, find isolation, these kind of things. Um, but it's also a pretty good map for fuel too. So I, I don't know who I would give advantage to. On defense, I think fuel's comp's going to beat dragon's comp though. But we'll see how fuel gets in here first. Yeah, very... Very similar to double bubble or any dive defense, really. Like, team is trying to rotate. Defending team dives during rotation. Easy kill. Um, this might be hard for Fuel because of how tight-knit they like staying. They would love to be able to... Oh my god, they already have a coalescence. Maybe this is what their actual plan is. But, like, if, if Tracer's in the game, this engage isn't allowed to happen. Because Tracer is here threatening point, threatening your backline. Um... Not to mention the counter dive potential and or even someone like Sombra with a counter hack potential and things like this. But like engages aren't this free when more mobile characters are in the game because everything else is happening at the same time. So it kind of sucks to see no tracer. But what fuel is doing, like it looked kind of like they were feeding a little bit here. But I think it was actually with the intention of building field their alt. He's up before Izayaki is even at 60. So that that seems to be intentional. And... This is almost like playing double bubble to farm nano boost for your Winston. It's only good if the enemy team can't do the same thing um, or isn't planning on doing the same thing. Because if they if they were able to match coalescence right now, fuel's time would be wasted. Or if they were predicting this coalescence right now, they just uh, retreat. New word of the day. Uh, they just retreat this coalescence, survive it, and then re-engage. Again, once Dallas is sort of out of gas. But... Seems like they weren't ready for this. Lip gets caught out. Lee Chi Kong gets caught out. Dallas is just... They're like a little sponge. They just absorb all this aggression and then just rebound it back. Sponge is not the right term. Like a rubber band, I suppose. Or a little slingshot. And it's, it's really just one off that off a single team fight. And again, like... Dragons are playing the game properly, right? They're playing the game as the way everyone has learned to play Overwatch. Enemy team is making a rotation, punish that rotation. Hey, we got a kill, we can keep going. And Dallas is like, this was part of our master plan all along. You've fallen for our schemes once again. All of a sudden they got a coalescence 30 seconds into the game. And then they go back in and then Dragon's just like, oh, damn. I didn't realize, or I, I wasn't thinking, I was, I was actually playing the video game, my bad. I wasn't playing five-dimensional chess. It's crazy how decisive all of these fights are looking, given how these compositions don't typically lead to de decisive wins. They're usually very back and forth, uh, hard to tell who's going to win, and then all of a sudden a Diva Bomb kills five, or a Death Blossom kills five. These kind of things happen. Um, but these have been like really fastly decided by Fuel. At least that first fight was here, too. They are just... Look how willing they are to retreat. No teams do this. Maybe San Francisco Shock does this. But no teams are this coordinated. Um, and no, not to mention this, like, selfless. How many DPS players do you know who are going for a play, hear, like, one of their supports say, okay, we got to kite back, and they're just like, okay, I'm going back to spawn. Because, like, that's what all six members of Dallas... I have a lot of respect for the discipline of all these players right now, because this is an incredibly hard thing to do as a team to know exactly how to react to every situation or to be able to react to communication in these situations uh, is a very, very difficult thing. And the reason I say like Shock have looked like this before too is when, especially in Reinhardt comps, what Shock loves to do is like, I'm not going to say it's intentional, but they win so many fights after losing a first member, falling back and then punishing anyone that chases them. That's exactly what Dallas is going here. Obviously, it's not anyone that died, uh, but it's, Dragons using alts, which can be thought of as a pretty big advantage, almost as big as getting a pick. So they're just like, okay, see ya. We're gonna wait this out. We're gonna wait for our turn. 
Uh, and Dragon's just like, oh no, we used our alts, we gotta find value. And now look how far forward they are. And they're trying so hard to make sure this play finds value that they're gonna get punished. Oh, the remake almost gets a kill. But look at this bomb! Okay, no. I thought this bomb was gonna land, like, right here, and it would've been sick, but... Unlucky angle. Two diva bombs used. I guess one was a copy. But now, we're literally back to square one, ten seconds later, except dragons are down and alt. I guess so are, so are fuel, but I would take copy over diva bomb any day. Um, so it's, it's crazy to think that they have this much discipline that just you don't see enough of in the league. Of course, as well, good on Shanghai not to fully overextend here and to actually not get punished uh, by the Diva Bomb and stuff like that. Um, but the the initial decision was made by Fuel, which is why I wanted to point it out. All right, commitment on both sides. Mine's just doing absolutely nothing. Dallas don't care about the objective. And again, this is like, this is a default play to make if you're ball. You think, okay, they're engaging. I'm going to stop their engage route. Because they're probably going to go to the point or go through the point. Meanwhile, Dallas just is like, nah, we're okay. They're using primal aggressively. They're using duplicate aggressively. But everyone else is playing relatively safely. Uh, making sure they get value out of their coalescence. Making sure they survive. Stuff like this diva bomb. I'm assuming we're going to see a hard commit from Dallas soon once they find a good enough target. Maybe Lee J Gong on the point right now. Nope, not yet. Death Blossom traded out. Okay, this is like what you see a lot of the the typical fights look like. Like, Dallas didn't even... It didn't even look like they were coordinating this play, to be honest. It just kind of happened in the moment. Like, sure, they were probably saying, like, I've got Blossom soon, stuff like this. But this wasn't, like, the play up until this moment. Up until Lip uses his Death Blossom. Something very common, by the way, is not only do enemy divas matrix the death blossom the allied diva will also use their matrix on the death blossom so that doa doesn't just walk up and shoot him in the head and melee him for a one shot um this is very very common as we can see the matrix coming up from void now so doa knows with lips of death blossom ending that's going to be some if not most of void's matrix already used so this is doa just starting his death blossom already we're halfway through matrix by the time death blossom is ending Matrix is gone, and the real damage is starting to come through. So, smart play to acknowledge that from Doa, but that's that's an individual play. That's not something the team coordinates. That's them recognizing Lip has been dealt with, now it's our turn to win the fight. That's an individual decision from Doa, supported by the rest of his team. Probably them shouting in comms, calling Reaper, 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 or Diva, 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 like these kind of things, but this is like the level of adaptability and in-the-moment play that can only work if you're this synergized, if you're this on the same page. So, like, this is like a standard play from Doa, and that, that's good. I'm not going to take anything away from that, obviously. But this play only works because of how together Dallas is playing, because they all have the same mindset in, in mind, ready to be like, okay, we're going to wait for our moment. We're not going to hard commit onto stupid stuff. They're using a bunch of ults. We're using a bunch of ults. That doesn't mean we've won the fight. We're still playing somewhat conservatively then Doa is the one to pull the trigger, and everyone's already ready to support that with their positioning, with the healing, with the Matrix, with, uh, yeah, with everything. So it's, it's not like the Reaper play that's impressive. It's the timing, number one, but it's the availability of all of Dallas in that moment to be ready to follow up and, and finish that play. It's pretty crazy. And then this is just cleanup. Echo is extremely good at cleanup, so is Reaper. Not a bad stall from Dragons, but four minutes on the clock is a pretty good time bank for 2CP. It looks like such a team diff, doesn't it? It's crazy. <laughs> I think this, this set went the distance to seven maps is crazy. All right, so now we're on defense, and again, I really think Fuel's composition, let me just skip ahead a little bit, get to the actual gameplay. I think Fuel's composition is even better, okay, yeah, 
Dragons are swapping to Aristocop. I don't remember this. Um, but I think while Ball is good in neutral and good for touching point and stuff like that, the engage potential from Fuel's comp, again, like the default way of playing dive defense is team makes a rotation, dive commits to the rotation, hopefully gets a punish. If they don't get the punish, attacking team gets space, defending team resets. If they do get the punish, attacking team uh, retreats, defending team tries to clean up kills, and then resets. Um, the way you counter this with an attacking dive is you leverage things outside of the rotation that are valuable, whether that's neutral damage, whether that's like poking a tank away, forcing him to jump, like poking fearless away, which straight up want to say it's not going to happen with this composition, but it's something you could try to do by touching the point or leveraging space on the objective uh, to force a reaction from the defending team, which then inherently creates space for the attackers to move through. Um, or otherwise just like playing to like bait the aggression and then go in afterwards. So like kind of what Fuel did where they baited the aggression. Of course, they had a coalescence on top of that because they were playing with that. Uh, but they baited this aggression and they went in after and punished. Those are typically the ways you see uh, dive defense played and played around. With Winston in the equation, it's so much harder because, well, one bubble, like we talked about, is great for these engages during enemy rotations. But more importantly, Primal is the best ultimate on defense uh, because enemies are forced to move around the map. They can't sit and spawn they can't just defend hold an angle they can't do these things without proper setup primal just denies a push on its own and on top of that primal farms other ultimates really really well and primal farms pretty easily once you are punishing rotations because you're getting things like six man cleaves and stuff like that so there's a lot of things that play well into dallas's defense composition dallas's composition for defense so with that in mind looks like dragons are opting to swap into this orissa comp which has seen some popularity in both NA and Korea. Idea of this composition. I'm surprised he's actually staying on the Moira and not opting for, I guess, a Baptiste. Maybe even an Ana for anti nades. Um, but what they're going to do here is what I assume they're going to do, given the amount of damage and shotguns and high HP. Uh, it's very dangerous to engage here, especially with, like, break CC and stuff like that. Without a Zarya bubble for your Winston to jump in, this this isn't a free engage. So Dallas is going to be forced to give up a little bit of space here. Uh, and what Dragon should be trying to do is almost, like, leapfrog forward. Like, they're going to peek here, threaten with their range damage of Torb and Orisa, maybe force Dallas to fall back or commit to an engage. If they commit to the engage, they, they absorb it. Then they leapfrog to the next point. If they rotate, then they maybe rotate or take space. Uh, but... Key thing here is if Dragon goes too quickly or doesn't respect Dallas's engage enough, uh, they will end up dying. So we'll see if that, how much they can deal with that engage, I guess. Yeah, Fearless opting to just frontline a little bit, but yeah, Fate can just walk at him with no fear. I think this is a little bit fast. I guess, actually, did they even use a shield? Do they still have a shield available? No, okay, they used their first shield. They're walking up with Shift. From her fate they're getting a bit of a pincer from void but that's not doing a ton and they're they're doing this to set up fleta and to enable a tp play from lip it looks like so they're going in really aggressively really quickly lip tp to the middle of point <laughs> they're just trying to walk it fearless but god look at the sustain i would actually like to see more aggression from sparkle here because sparkle is the one person who can punish this um these people right now are all focused on surviving the horse. This is what Dragons is doing. These people are surviving. Well, without giving up too much space, they're keeping them here. They're keeping them at this corner, these kind of things. Uh, but also not contesting enough to where they're actually committing so that Fearless doesn't die and stuff like that. I'm surprised how healthy they are. This is like excellent damage mitigation from Hanbin Fearless uh, and Fielder's Healing, of course. Um, I don't know why they're so healthy. Honestly, they shouldn't be. But during this whole time, the fact that they are this healthy means Sparkle is free for longer. There's no hit scan still. Like, sure, Fleta can land shots from long range, but it's much harder to hit someone who's airborne during all this time. So Fleta should be looking for sticky bombs in the back line. Obviously, he gets lip like this, but I think he could be taking a more aggressive angle during this time, dueling off an enemy diva, things like this. Uh, could be huge value and initiate a dive or a push from Dallas. But like we saw, lip goes down. So much damage follow-up. 
if if dragons don't win the neutral, if they don't get enough out of their slow movement like this, they're just going to collapse and fall to damage eventually. Dallas will find an opportunity, uh, and funnily enough, the closer you get to point, the more open space you're playing in, means more opportunity. So they need to find something uh, more beneficial to them than just touching the objective. They need to find damage onto Fearless to force them to jump away. They need to get a kill. They need to build an ultimate. Maybe Coalescence will be enough to to engage here, but Cold Dupe from Fuel should be enough to shut this down. I'm assuming a dupe on D.Va. Okay, Primal use as well. Dupe on D.Va. Wow. Discipline. They realize that pushing through either of these chokes could result in death. And so even after Sparkle just ulted, his team's calling for him to back up, and they back up. This is going to mean it's going to be really hard for him to charge a bomb, although not that hard. They just fed him 40... I know it's I know it's duplicate ult charge, so it charges really quickly, but they just fed him 40 ult charge when he's shooting from here as D.Va. That's just so unnecessary. I don't get why you would do this. So right now he's at 50. He's at 50% ult charge. What are you doing, Fate? You're not going to charge another Coalescence. Just matrix them across. Also, what is Fleta doing during this time? How did Fleta... Oh, he, he fell off the map? That's... This is, uh... This is a bit messy from Dragons. Like, why do you just give Spalter... Or Spar Spalter. Sparkle, Diva Bomb. Oh, and yeah, the Primal knocks him up. Okay. I mean, nice play from Fearless. But also, like... Why are you peeking? Is supports were, this is this is a lack of coordination and communication from Shanghai. So the two team styles. I, I've <laughs> this might sound weird. I've been watching a lot of like High Q recently, which if you guys don't know is a volleyball themed anime, and a big part of that anime is like every team has like its own kind of superpower or their own like direction uh, that makes them the strongest at one thing. And I'm just thinking to me like these teams have such different identities that fuel is like just this all in live for the dream uh, everyone stick together team and it's like n everyone's opinion is heard and listened to no one questions each other there's always it's always team first that kind of thing whereas dragons is almost like the opposite and they want to play around lip and fleta so heavily that it's actually costing them playmaking ability because they're trying to go ahead of the team in this case like Lee Jing on and Izayaki were still here and Fleta was here. Think about that disconnection. Like, what kind of communication do you think is happening to the point where Fleta's making a decision to push aggressively here? Either it's a lack of communication, like Li Jingyong and Izayaki weren't calling to slow down, or the teammates that were going to peel for them didn't call to slow down, or it's Fleta is like the only is like the big boss, and it's like he's the only one calming stuff, and anything he calms needs to be followed, and if he if it isn't, he gets killed. So it's like. This is like a clear lack of synergy in comparison to fuel, at least. Uh, that's just really unnecessary. All right. Again, hard to spectate. I'm sorry, but as we see, fuel getting the better of this. Good surround, good committal. Again, uh, an outplay with the Death Blossom. I'm assuming they have a lot of practice with the Reaper v. Reaper. Um, I don't know a lot about Reaper, to be perfectly honest, in terms of like how you approach fights, in terms of tactics and stuff like that. There's been a lot of different play styles that have been adopted over the, the years of play, between uh, rush comps with Reaper, where you try to off-angle or just walk through Rhine Shields, between Reaper Dive, where you TP into the backline and then surround enemy teams, uh, this counter Reaper play style, where Doa is probably marking Lip a lot more than I'm noticing, um, and then as we saw on the second point on Fuel's attack, the counter death blossom play knowing uh the matrix usage uh habits and stuff like that but yeah a lot there there is more depth than reaper might suggest he has in pro play uh but i still find him a very boring hero and i don't know a ton at least not of modern reaper play of like what teams are doing with him now more of just like historically what people have done but yeah, I, I like Doa's approach to Reaper for the most part, where he sticks mainly to his team, and then he plays to punish rather than to aggress. 
Sparkle is a lot more flexible for that sort of aggression role. All right, Lee J gone with the Rhine Shield walking through. Goodbye, Void's mech. Oh, oh, Void's gonna live. Okay, this is a rare case where Dallas has opted for an engage that didn't pay off, and they're becoming split. This is Dallas's nightmare. Uh, they're becoming split because they committed, uh, and because I'm guessing they got caught off guard by the Diva Bomb, and now the Bongo follow-up is causing them to remain split, because if they walk, if they try to group through open sight lines, they're just going to get beamed out. I love that Dallas doesn't care at all about the objective. I think... For 2CP and for Koth, it's easier to do this because of, obviously, you need to cap a full uh, point, uh, all three ticks, or on on Koth, like, it takes time to wind up. So you can leverage this a lot more than teams currently do. Uh, but I love that they're not, they're willing to just, like, okay, now we play here. Now we're going to point. Now we're over here. Now we're over here. And they do it all together. Uh, you'll often see, like, DPS players or, like, flankers especially do this kind of play style where they'll, like, dip in and out of fights in unsuspecting ways to keep the opponent guessing. But Dallas is doing this at like a team level, which is really cool to see. And it's not like this is like brand new tech or anything. It's just really nice to see this level of discipline again. Um, it doesn't seem like much. Like it really just looks like Dallas is sticking together and moving around the map, right? But like keep in mind that they're all trying to make individual plays during all this time, but they're able to keep that bigger picture at the front of their brain, at the front of their brains, play together so consistently, come back from losing situations so consistently. And it's the sign of a really coordinated team. There's not much else to say. Last chance. So I just noticed because I'm like half asleep apparently they end up swapping fate to the ball uh, everything else is the same except for the Torb on Fleta obviously um, but this is sort of like a desperation play and again I think this defense favors fuel especially when both teams are looking to engage at a time like this having a Winston in a fight like this is going to do more for you than having a ball outside of this first slam which to their credit is finding huge value right now followed up by the coalescence but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Now that that one slam play was used, like, Fate needs to take time to go set up again. Meanwhile, uh, Fearless has just been zapping away. People have been using his bubble. Diva Bomb comes to point. Again, even with that Diva Bomb play uh, from Sparkle's copy here, look how quickly people realize... It's not a play that's worth sticking around for and how quickly they, they opt to chase for this play. So a lot of teams would be like, okay, we're diva bombing, good luck. And then everyone's like, ooh, let's watch the let's watch the diva bomb, maybe we'll get a kill. And then they see they don't get a kill and they're like, oh, okay, we need to do something. And then they'll go chase fate or and then they'll go set up another dive. Dallas are like already into their next play as their previous play is ending. I'm guessing, I don't know how planned this is, but I'm guessing anytime Sparkle duplicates or anytime Fearless primals, they just don't count them as part of the pack anymore and the remaining five people go do whatever. Uh, or sometimes four people if they're both, both ulting. Because it's kind of like a mix-up game where typically you wouldn't be expecting outside threats if you're playing against Fuel, but then as soon as one of these ults come online, there's a Diva Bomb here and you don't want to ignore the Diva Bomb or the, the, the copy Diva because... Uh, charging bomb and bomb is really good and remech is really good now as well and you the same way you don't want to ignore primal but if you spend your time time trying to deal with these things you're going to open so many opportunities for the remaining members um, so it's, it's kind of like a you want to be able to avoid that external threat while still focusing on the core group that's running around if you're shanghai I bet they have a uh, player who everybody orients around. My guess is Jexa. If I had to guess, it would be Fearless. Um, but that being said, it could literally be anyone. It could be Fielder. It could be Doa. Uh, although knowing Doa, it's probably not Doa. <laughs> uh, he's not that uh, talkative in game. Uh, but they're they're I one don't think it's a single person. 
I'll, although it could be to I, I don't know straight up uh, it could be one person but i think it's a combination of fearless and jexa so i think you're you're partly right i think hanbin is thinking about too many things to properly communicate everything he's thinking about not necessarily what his team is doing so he, need, he needs to be thinking about what the enemy team is doing more than his own team so he needs to be told what his team is doing uh, i think doa's doing the same thing and i think sparkle's looking for his own individual opportunities not to mention looking for duels when it suits him uh and fielder i think is really just looking to keep up and stay alive a lot of the time so i think that opens up a lot of opportunity for fearless to look for clear engage timings and jexa to look for clear potential disengage timings um, but those can go hand in hand at the same time. If Fearless is getting low and needs to jump away, that's a disengaged timing. If Jexa sees an opportunity and has speed available, that's an engaged timing. I think it's a combination of these two, because these two have the most important roles between speed boost, um, as well as disruption that Lucio offers, and Winston as a character, being the main tank, having bubble, having jump, are very key parts of their engage, as well as their disengage, that I think both of them need to be involved in some way. Obviously, everyone's got to be talking, um, everyone's got to be thinking like, okay, can we go here? No, we can't. I don't have fade. No, we can't. I need to, I just wraith the way or I just lost mech. Like it's not always that obvious, but I'm sure that everyone's talking about when or why an engaged timing is good. Uh, but when this isn't, when the decision is actually made, they're all very, very quick to follow it, which is crazy. 2-0 fuel. Um, again, it just looks like a team diff. I'm not a fan of the Arisa comp the dragons pulled out. I think for in order for it to work, they would need like something like an Ash. Why not run this, but with like Ash Mercy? Or not even Ash Mercy, McCree Baptiste instead of Moira. Have that hit scan, have that threat from range. You need more than just survivability because well, one, survivability didn't get you anywhere. Fuel just let you into open space and then eventually found something with sticky bombs. But even if they didn't find something with sticky bombs, they'd find something with coalescence, with dupe, with blossom that you wouldn't be able to deal with. You would, they would build some overwhelming amount of pressure that even this very self-contained, self-preservation uh, comp would is normally good at, at surviving these things. Eventually, Fuel would find a reason to go aggressive and overwhelm them. But yeah. Uh, if they had something that was more threatening at range, they'd be able to force more things. They'd be able to force Fearless to jump away. They'd be able to force Sparkle to play more conservatively. But because they didn't have those things, Sparkle got free sticky bombs. Fearless literally just walked up to Fate and zapped him in the face and then walked it off. Uh, there was not enough damage to threaten that kind of play, even though they have like double shock. And that, that you'd think that'd be like the one thing they are trying to threaten. But because of all the mitigation, because of bubble, because of Matrix... Uh, because of healing from fielder that wasn't an option um, and they needed to be able to threaten fearless but also be able to threaten sparkle at the same time also be able to threaten doa if he goes aggressive uh, which they can't do without something like a hit scan i don't think but it's over and done with that's map two let's go into map three we're already an hour into the stream we've covered two whole maps <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's a lot still left to look at. So game three is Numbani. You really want Tracer with a front-to-back tank comp? Y you want Tracer in almost every situation in the Overwatch League, to be honest. Tracer's so good at literally everything in the game. She does a lot of damage. She's got good isolation potential. She's got insane mobility, obviously. She's got good survivability with recall. She's got good dual potential. She can control the map better than anyone else. She can control objectives like the cart better than anyone else. She does so much. And without her we see teams living for longer, as well as having more awkward engages. All right. So again, we're in the same matchup. Again, I would put give the favor to Fuels Comp on defense. I think when Dragons is defending, it's kind of like a 50-50, uh, but... When the map's flipped, I give the favor to having the Winston just because I think have, being able to control more important spaces like choke points and stuff like that for longer uh, is going to be more beneficial to Sparkle than Fate's contributions are going to be beneficial to Fleta. And I think those are the more important members more of the time in these team fights. But let's see how dragons do this on defense.
So Dallas is opting to push a little front to back here. I'm guessing this is non-committal and just to build coal. Ooh. They got booped around. Oh, Doa, that was very aggressive. All right, if they are building coal, it is fairly slow. Okay, now they're going in again. Half committal this time, pushing a little bit further. A little bit further than, than, than they'd like, I think. Coalescence is built, but is it gonna be enough? I don't think so. Dragon's looking a lot smarter now, willing to retreat out of this fight, wait the coalescence out, and give up the objective. Then when Fleta finds a way in, they go in with their coalescence. That was really smart play. That was dragons looking like fuel, like adapting their playstyle. Uh, I think fuel got a little impatient here. I think they got a little optimistic based off the past two rounds, and they thought they could find an advantage here and catch them off guard, uh, when in reality I think they should have just waited for primal or coalescence. Maybe even beat or duplicate, depending on how fast they're charging. Alright, now they're going in again. They've got dupe this time. I'm surprised Sparkle isn't coming in from the side. Uh, I'm surprised anyone isn't coming in from the side, or even underneath. If we sent, like, Fearless... When I say we, I mean the fuel. Uh, if we sent Fearless, like, here, and jumped up to engage, followed up by, like... I mean, even just, like, without peeking, if, like, Doa, Jexa, Fielder were ready here, Hanbin as well, obviously, uh, and then, like, Sparkle's underneath, going up here for a dupe, Imagine the surround and the burst potential. But obviously, uh, I think what Dallas is opting for with a rotation like this is not committing to this fight, but committing to the bigger fight that's going to evolve afterwards. They're prepping for the different possibilities more than just the engage, which I don't hate either. But um, this, this is kind of trying to justify this in my own head. <laughs> Uh, this makes sense for a dive defense because dive defenses are so non-committal on these kind of spaces. Even though this is a really good space, they're not trying to stay here until the end of time like a Reinhardt comp would or a comp with a hit scan would. Because there's no one benefiting hugely from that space. They're just not trying to give it to Dallas for free because this is a good space for Dallas to stage engages on and around the point. Uh, so dragons are trying to deny that more than they're trying to uh, actually commit to this, this this space. I'm at a loss for words. But, I mean, <laughs> very non-committal again. Now they're just going main. Now they're splitting with Sparkle. So maybe that was just, like, literally just to get an alt out. Maybe they were hoping to get beat or, or dupe or something, but mines are, are definitely worth it to trade out for literally nothing but some time. Sparkle's flanking now. Tries to get the assassination. Doesn't hit Fleta. Four Divas on the field. And yeah. See how aggressive Sparkle is and see how he's not dying. Because as soon as they try to engage on Sparkle or they try to like commit to him, that's when Dallas will commit onto Sparkle's existing location, throw down a bubble, throw down the engage, use primal, and just punish them for even like half committing to dealing with Sparkle. Meanwhile, if they don't deal with Sparkle, he's immediately got a Diva Bomb. I don't understand this. Why would you bomb there? I, I I have to assume he meant to bomb straight up. Because this literally makes no sense. Unless, I don't know. I mean, he got Fleta, kind of. <laughs> that bomb makes sense if Dallas is trying to move this way or this way. If they're trying to guarantee rotation, that bomb makes sense. Because that bomb denies any engage onto the Baby Diva, for example. Um, but if they're trying to move aggressive, like, even the, the fight on point here, or even the fight onto Fleta, I would have rather seen a bomb, like, here, or even up here, on this ledge. Uh, but it looked like Par Sparkle purposefully aimed it this way, and I don't understand why. Hanbin ends up going down, no Diva Matrix means Blossom finds value. They get a tick and a half. I really think that was just a misplay from Sparkle. Um... If he had gone straight up, they would be able to do things like potentially punish Fleta, or even potentially look for a dive up here. Oh, hi, Archer. Ooh, they're very aggressively posturing. Good. 
Dallas running it back down. Okay, okay, Archer, hello. You're standing on my headphones, sir. Um, so this I'm gonna re rewatch this engage. So this time Doe was on the flank, looking for the engage, and he's so far unscouted. We open up with coalescence. We have blossom available, and that's it. So this engage doesn't look bad. Uh, it looks more early commitment than fuel usually does. So this is either them just mixing up their engage timings, where before we saw them very ready to like bait in and then immediately leave. Um, or this is just them um, having a better understanding of the alt economy, knowing that they have something like Blossom and Dragons don't. So they're going to trade coalescences, hopefully burn Void's Matrix somehow, um, and then get value out of their Death Blossom when Dragons have nothing to immediately counter with it. So I, I can't tell if this is just mix-up game and then trying different tempos, or if this is like a really strong read on alt economy. Uh, but yeah. The boop. I, Void flew so high up trying to find the Reaper, I'm guessing. I think he assumed Reaper was with them or teeping behind them, uh, but sees Doa a little too late, and Izayaki goes down. After that, they've got the point. Completely left the point. Dragons look like they're trying to get back in. <laughs> Fate just granny rolling through the point. That's unlucky he got body blocked. <laughs> That's going to mean a free cap. Without Fate there to buy them time, they can't set up for anything real. That was kind of funny. When Sparkle has ult, why don't they try to punish at another place like Lip? Let the cooldowns get absorbed by Echo Zelt and overload somewhere else. So yeah, that's normally what they do. But they can also do something less predictable uh, by playing slower. So the moment Sparkle uses his ult, like when he turned into Diva down here, um, dragons are likely expecting an engage and likely aren't trying to aggress at the same time. So if Fuel opts to go aggressive at the same time as their duplicate, unless they can completely overwhelm the people they're trying to engage on, like say they're trying to engage up here with copy diva with their full engage, then kiting from the copy is the same as kiting from their main engage. So what they're trying to do is cause either their main group or Sparkle's duplicate to find some sort of value that the other uh, piece can capitalize on. So whether that's Sparkle and Diva touching the point, being an independent threat, being really annoying and charging a Diva bomb, uh, and then they engage, or whether that's uh, them using copy and then having the core move around the map, bait and engage onto them, and then Sparkle can go isolate someone. Uh, those are the main plays they'll be looking for. And from what I've seen for the most part, they are looking for. All right, looks like our next fight's coming up. What are these mines supposed to do? Wait, how does field... What happened to the Dallas fuel that's willing to retreat? Okay, so right here? Leave. <laughs> or at least, like, get behind payload. Get behind this line so you don't you're not split up by the mines. Why does Fearless jump in aggressive? Like, I know he's got Primal coming up. Um, so, and I guess it's because of Doa's position. I guess they're telling themselves that they can still commit to this fight. Um, but this is, like, a really bad position for Fielder, Hanbin, and Jexa. Uh, we also saw Fielder wasted his shift, his fade, a little bit earlier. So he's a prime dive target. I don't know if Dragon saw that. Uh, but I think he was escaping echo damage, so they probably did. But yeah, this seems like an unnecessary split. And... Again, this is fuel reading dragons from last map or two maps ago, because dragons were playing a lot slower then. This is dragons more willing to commit on their ultimates. Are you chewing on my headphones? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Bad cat. Um, 
this is dragons willing to commit despite their alt timing being pretty awkward in my opinion um they're still a lot more willing to commit including Lijigon and izayaki uh, which we haven't seen enough of before and this is fuel trying to play as if they are not going to commit and they're going to get value from diving backline at the same time as their engage meanwhile doa and fearless have zero targets in front of them and fuel's getting mowed over so they've almost like flipped roles Fuel should have been playing slower there to absorb that engage, given that they didn't have immediate uh, an immediate target to punish or anything like that, um, and just waited them out and then try to punish them once they're out of gas. Once the mines go away, once they've already committed their positioning and things like this, once they see a better target. Coalescent to open things up. Dupe on both sides, so four divas on the field again. No damage is being dealt. Oh my god, the bomb... What's happening, dude? I don't know what I'm looking at. Alright, Shanghai wins, I guess. <laughs> I mean, this was just ults finding value. This is what we've seen a lot of this matchup look like um, in most most team fights. Um, Dallas typically looked more interesting than this, but this was both teams having a read that they could engage fully, uh, having simil very similar ult economies, uh, and committing literally at the exact same time with their copy bombs. And sometimes that just works out for one team and not the other. This is like uncharacteristically fast paced for Dallas. And that bomb, again, we should have known we were in no position to capitalize on that bomb. Uh, we weren't dealing with anything immediate. We're getting a little bit flustered on this map. Dallas is. I like this mind play way more than any other mind play I've seen all game from Fate. Good stuff. So this is on the back of uh, Fuel already kiting backwards. This is on them having a clear engage timing with mines, with the team moving forward with them. Like they're already engaging at the time that the mines and the slam lands. Like there's already damage being done, which is forcing cooldowns and stuff like that. So good job from Dragon. Also, this position for mines is just way better as well. The beat is forced. Coalescence is forced. The problem now is they did all that and they 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 did all that and they got beat in coal. That's a win. That this doesn't mean you win a team fight. This means you are ahead in this team fight and it's forcing them to use ultimate abilities to even and then turn it in their favor. But Shanghai is still committing to the space somewhat. Lip is staying look where Lip left Wraith form. He wraithed here. He went like this, and he ended Wraith here. At no point in time was his team ready to support him when he left Wraith, because they were under the impression they were they were committing during this fight. This is them having a bad read over when it's their turn. They started this off really well, and they used ultimates really well. They used mines, in my opinion, really, really well. But you can't just say, okay, I got a huge mines off, now we win the fight. And it's like, no, we, now we got huge mines off, now we forced their beat. Now they don't have beat for the real team fight once that happens. Stop trying to eat my headphones, you little monster. I'm putting you on the bed. Now he's unplugged them too. Okay. The cat distraction is gone. So, when... Where was I? <laughs> when, uh, when, whenever fuel commits, it's never just like they commit... And then this is the team fight. Good luck, everybody. It's always like they're punching through a board. They have the point of impact in mind, but that's not where the fight ends. They're punching through so they can follow through whatever happens after that point of impact. They Shanghai commits with mines, and then they say, okay, team fight, guys, good luck. And everyone shoots at their targets and stuff like that. And I mean, it's more complicated than that, obviously, but that's what it looks like from a top down. Meanwhile, Fuel's like, okay, they've committed mines. Okay, let's commit beat. Okay, what's next? Okay, this target's available. Oh, they used Wraith. Let's write, like, let's focus on lip. Okay, what's next? Next, 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 next. Meanwhile, Shanghai's getting caught off one by one. And Dallas is always on a new target. Always together. And it's not like Shanghai can't do what Dallas is doing. It's They, they just need to be more patient. 
and they need to be less individualistic and more team focused, especially in this meta. They should be able to touch here, fearless or fate at the very least. That's the second time this match Lee going inside with a beat. Too primal. Was he did he was he getting juggled when he tried to proc beat? Because if he was This is like, this is Lucio 101. If you're planning on using beat this next team fight, you do not put yourself in any position to be taken out of the fight or to be threatened. If they have an EMP, you hide. If they have a Prime Link Winston, you get away from him and you time your beat very, very uh, carefully. Despite that, Dragon seem to be winning this fight. Die, die. So let's go back and see exactly how they did that. So this is right after Lee Jigong dies. They commit Coalescence as Primal's ending. The health pools from Dallas are not great right now. And they are a little bit split by this Coalescence. The Diva Bomb goes in. Diva Bomb leads into a Death Blossom. That gets shut down by Void. How did... How was Doa so low that he got meleeed by Void? Oh no. He made a really obvious TP play. And he's trying to kill the Echo. Really well played by Void to acknowledge that and answer that so quickly. Void carrying this fight. Fleta copies a Reaper, which is not very common because uh, oftentimes very easy to deny and also burn them down faster than a D.Va. It's also just like his ultimates in this meta is less valuable than D.Va Bomb because you can just Matrix it. You can't Matrix D.Va Bomb. So that was looking really good for Fuel. Um, it's just the Coalescence. I think Fuel seems to have a problem when... They're about to, like, how do I want to say it? Like, when they're about, not when they're about to cap an objective only, but, like, when they are ahead and all they need to do is is keep that lead, I think they try to get too fancy. When they were ahead in this fight after they killed the Lucio, like, they could have just left the point. Waited, like, waited the Coalescence out. Uh, these kind of, even though they still had Primal going, they didn't need to continue aggression immediately. Before they commit for the first time, they're usually really, really good. But then... After they commit even a little bit, like they committed this primal play and they denied the, the beat, which was huge. Um, they've already committed. They've kind of like, they've swapped their brains. Like, you know, in like Star Fox, when the R wings go from like scout mode to attack mode and they open up their wings, like fuel seems to like go into like this team fight mindset and all those really great macro decisions, all those really clean team rotations just go out the window. And they try really, really hard to finish the fight because they've decided this fight is worth finishing. Uh, and that's why we saw Doha going for the TP play. That's why we saw Sparkle in the enemy backline. That's why we saw Fearless jump in as his primal was ending instead of jumping out during the enemy coalescence. Because they had decided that, for better or for worse, we're committing to this and we need to make it work. Which, again, wasn't the right call there, but is really good discipline. Um, it takes a lot to... Not blindly follow, obviously, but to have that much faith in a call, in any sort of call in a game like this, where you don't directly see an opportunity, to try and create an opportunity off of an aggressive call like that. Uh, and I think Doha going aggressive, Fearless and Sparkle going aggressive at the same time, Hanbin going for that bomb, are all signs of that. And, I mean, the reality is you're not going to win every team fight, uh, But I still think that's a really good look from Fuel. Uh, on top of that, though, talking about the Dragons, the actual winners of that fight, um, they are looking infinitely cleaner. They are not splitting up as much in the middle of teamfights. Fleta is just not going for aggressive duels 24-7 like he has against past Echoes because he knows it's not working against Fuel. He is playing more for the team, playing more opportunistically, uh, and they're playing a lot smarter. Not necessarily slower, but pickier about their engages. 
uh, and it's looking like it's working out really well for them. So I mentioned before, I like Winston more on defense here, and I think in this matchup, I give the, the favor to Fuel um, when they are on defense, just because I think Bubble is just insane in areas like this, uh, not to mention six-man cleaving on chokes and stuff like that. So let's see how it works out for him. Fearless gets pooped off. This is Shanghai committing early. Uh, similar to what I said Fuel could be trying to do. Fuel obviously had a different game plan in mind where they were trying to like bait resources, go in and out. Um, again, I think they were trying to play around cold even though they didn't really do it. Um, but this is Shanghai saying like, nope, first fight, our fight, we're going in, we're setting up flanks, we're hard committing, we're using slam, we're using echo flanks, we're doing all this stuff. And as long as they don't get punished, which it is very hard to punish any single member in this comp, um, it gets the space for them. And they don't need to commit to ending the fight right now. They've, again, it's the same as uh, the mine play before that got out Jex's beat. Like, they've won this space. This is a team fight win. Even though the team fight, or the, the, the point winning team fight hasn't happened yet, they've won the opening engage. And they should be happy with that. And they should be looking to set up their next engage, not looking to maintain this aggression like I'm worried Fleta is doing right now. Okay, they're backing up. They're stabilizing. Izayaki got caught out a little bit there. I would have loved to see them just stay on the high ground. Maintain that space uh, for Fleta. But yeah, a little bit too much too fast. So again, the engage was good, but they tried to go out too quickly. And Fuel was one step ahead of them that even though they, were, they had to give up the space, they were looking for their opportunity back in. Uh, and then they found ways to punish one by one. In a mirror matchup, or a pseudo mirror matchup, this is pretty close to a mirror matchup, it's often about not making the first mistake, not necessarily making the first outplay. And I think that's especially true in this composition where um, every single character has a get out of jail free card where they can just survive getting engaged on. Um, they can survive attention for longer than average. Um, so anytime that someone does die, it's because they didn't have their, their escape button. It's because they might've been out of position, they were out of resources, or they misread, uh, the opponent's aggression. Ooh, very early aggression from Fuel here. I like this. This is what I wanted from Dragon's defense when they were holding, um, Lijong Tower Gardens. They need to make plays like this to deny the setup from the attackers. Easy fight win. That built primal, that built almost beat, almost bomb. And coalescence is basically a cooldown, so that'll be up, if not this next fight, then the fight after. <laughs> Fate's just chilling, waiting for his rollout. Really think these mines. Like. Fate's a better ball player than me, and he knows more about the hero than I will ever know. I don't understand why he opts for mines after slamming instead of going for like a... So he wants to slam right away because if they see him coming uh, and they can react to that, he won't hit anyone with his slam. Like if he, if he flies high, drops his mines, and then slams, people can react to that with speed, with booping him out of the air with either D.Va or um, Lucio, sorry. Um, and that's a more reactable play. So I'm guessing that's why he's opting for the slam first. But in the same way that they could react to the slam if he mines first, they can react to the mines if he slams first. The recovery time before he can put out mines is basically the same as when they can start moving again. Uh, and of course, mines have an activation time where until all these pretty lights turn on, uh, they don't actually do anything. So as we're seeing, before the mines are even activated, they already own this space. And it's not because of the mines. It's because of the engage timing. It's because fuel is disengaging at the time that dragons are using their cooldowns. It's If it's anything, it's because of the coalescence. So like, sure, maybe now Sparkle can't land back up here and go for an assassination on Flutter right now or something like that. But this was like so unnecessary. And if he had mines right now, he could be, since he already denied this space by their engage, he can now be mining, like, over here. So it's harder for them to get, harder for Fielder and Jexa and Doa to get back into the fight. 
or even on point at this point, since uh, that's where the fight's evolving to, but didn't need to be that early with it. Beats traded back and forth. Blossom, bomb. Another bomb. Ooh, Sparkle goes down. That's unlucky timing. All right, dragons are coming out ahead. I think this basically came down to them having more ultimates. Oh, wait. Fielder's not giving up. A bit ambitious. I mean, they killed Izayaki, so maybe they can get in, but without ultimates. Fearless on the ball now. Without something like a duplicate or a diva bomb. Fleta, how do you die to that? You can't take duels when you're winning. There's no reason. Okay, the trade out with Void. Another set of mines for Fate. This should be it. Unless Fate goes down for some reason. Unless Hanbin builds a bomb right now. I really don't see Fuel winning this. They're stalling a lot of time though. And they're forcing more and more ultimates. Um, yeah, I was going to go over that again, but it really just came down to a lot of ults being used, I think. <laughs> Alright, first point over. Three minutes on the clock. They only need to cap second point here. And they're currently ahead on ultimates. And Fearless is on ball now, which is not his most comfortable tank. At least, like, he's not a bad ball, but, like, he's, it's not as comfortable as his Winston. And at the very least, it's not what they've been practicing. Uh, it's not what Fuel's been practicing. Another beat from the Jagon. Hard to see exactly what's going on, but beats have been traded out. I think really good kiting from Fuel there at the beginning of this engage. Uh, being able to stabilize in this room, and then the mines that deny a lot of the follow progression from Fearless look good. And then, of course, Jex's beat hits almost everyone except Fearless. That's kind of nuts. That in this all this chaotic space, he managed to hit everyone. Almost everyone. And then, again, even after all this chaos and even after kiting, and even when you'd think this would be the safe place to go, or, or kiting this way would be the expected way to go, you see Fuel wrapping around here together as a team. Fast, decisive call. Doa finds an opportunity to Death Blossom, despite two Divas being on the field. Nice little tech there from Doa. The invincibility frames of TP kept him out of the bomb damage. Uh, but yeah, really good kiting, really good re-engage from Dallas. And again, it's dragons are punching harder, uh, but fuel are sort of dancing around them better. Very early engage from Copy here. I don't like this. This is uncharacteristic from both Sparkle and all of Fuel, technically. I was going to say, like, how did he kill two? I forgot. The mech also gives the same icon, which is a little confusing. Uh, but you can see why this is bad. And this is looking like... It's almost like they flipped roles. Like, this is looking like what Shanghai would do on their defense and what Fuel would do uh, as a response. Instead, it's literally just a one-dimensional play where they used Copy and they tried to push with it. That's all that happened. And then Shanghai just hit S on their keyboards. Maybe they committed speed boost. And then as soon as that aggression was over, they canceled uh, Sparkle's ult. They punished him for it. Now they're re-aggressing with Cole, which again, isn't going to win the fight, but it's going to give them advantage that can potentially win them the fight if they find something else to play off of. This Coalescence is going to kill Sparkle. The Diva Bomb being committed from Shanghai. They're doing... It's almost like... Fuel were playing, like, third tempo there, which was interesting. Like, they went in aggressively, kind of like, I don't think this was intentionally a bait, but it caused Shanghai to answer aggressively because it got nothing. But now, their, their seemingly actual turn, their trap card, was punishing the re-aggression from Shanghai. It wasn't like this initial copy play that was supposed to f win the fight. It's the re-aggression after the re-aggression from Shanghai that's closing things out. Uh, and finding value for them. Oops. 
So again, I don't know how, how intentional that was, uh, but it's pretty cool how it's working out. It's not going to be enough. Okay, never mind. Maybe with the Diva Bomb, if Hanbin stays alive? No. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be enough for them to hold the cart or anything, but it did get a lot of ults out of dragons. It got the Diva Bomb and the Coalescence. Maybe not a lot, but I got a few ults out. It was something. I, again, I don't know how intentional it was, but what what's most likely is Sparkle called an aggressive copy play. They didn't find any value, so they said kite, and then during their kite, they realized they had Coalescence coming up. They had um, Diva Bomb coming up as well. They ended up using Diva Bomb weirdly, but they had these ultimates coming up, so they thought to themselves, hey, we can re-aggress. So I don't know whose call that was. I think it was a good one. It just wasn't perfectly executed. Oh, man. The pinballs flying around the map. Bit of an awkward mines. Would have loved to see them either like here behind the payload uh, or even like to deny specific people like maybe even Fleta and Lip by using them on the high grounds here using them more spread out. These mines basically do nothing unless dragons were already committing past the payload. Fate's mines, on the other hand, using them more on the payload and on this half of the side means that any aggression from fuel will need cooldowns to get through, uh, or they'll need extra time to break through the mines and heal up any damage they do. So yeah, fuel basically has no option to go aggressive. Now the beat gives them an option, with Doa TPing onto the high ground. Lip ripping the first Death Blossom gets fully matrixed. Doa's 1 HP, so we can't answer back. And this is going to close out the map. More ults on the side of dragons. More ults. Better use mines. Um, better... More... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More patient play from dragons there as well. I don't even think Fearless needed to open with mines when he did. Uh, let alone the execution of them was uh, suboptimal. Uh, but yeah, the patience from dragons, knowing they had time on their side, knowing they could set up Lip and Fleta for more uh, aggressive plays later down the line. Smart stuff. Doa tried to make a really aggressive play with the beat. As soon as it fell flat, uh, Lip was already making a Death Blossom play and it was too late to respond to it. 2-1 in favor of Fuel at the moment. Shanghai looking a lot better this map, but also Fuel looking a little bit sloppier. This might not be a comfort map for them, but I don't know why that would cause them to make such... Uh, different calls like this engage with only Sparkle's copy. That was a little bit awkward to me, especially since copy is such a valuable ultimate in this composition. It's like the biggest playmaking ultimate, in my opinion. It led to a pretty awkward engage. All right, we're moving on to game four. Ready for battle. So we are now 2 1 fuel over dragons of our seven map set. Fast forward a bit. Five, so, four, three, on a map you'd usually see like Widowmaker comps, long range hit scan, maybe Ash Tracer. Fortunately now, we have the one comp uh, on both sides still. I, I don't know why Fuel picked this map. I'm guessing because it's not a great ball map. Um, the rollouts for ball in this map. So great ball maps are usually ones with clear uh, lanes to approach from and clear not open space, but not fully closed space. And I don't know how to describe that any better. Uh, but like, so open space like this is bad for ball, right? There's nothing to grapple onto. You, They can see you coming very easily and get out of the way. Stuff like that. Stuff like this. It's also very bad for ball. All this complicated inside geometry, uh, very hard to roll through, no long lanes to roll through. No, I mean, sure, there's ledges you can slam off and stuff like that, but not a lot of easy mobility on insides like this. So Rialto is kind of a mix of these two situations, very open spaces and then very closed spaces the whole way through. Second point, very open, very closed. Very open, very closed somewhat open this is probably the best part of the map for ball uh somewhat this is yeah actually this this is like perfect ball material like high walls to use grapples for uh options for taking for taking different lanes 
for approaching in more creative ways, high enough sky boxes that you can swing through the sky, maybe even swing over these roofs and find slam angles and stuff like that. But up until this point, there's a lot of these open sight lines into tight corridors, which are not Ball's best friend. Uh, so I could see that be a reason enough to want to pick this map if you're fuel. Um, but that being said, it doesn't really benefit fuel's comp either. It doesn't really benefit this comp in general. So maybe just shutting down ball even like a little bit by picking this map is worth it. Hard to say though. One. It's also a really good just echo map in general. Because of the rooftops and the different uh, balconies that you can use since you're not fully airborne like Farah. Yeah, Fuel's just going to wait for it to hit this corner. Look for an opportunity to shut them down. It's going to be very, very hard. I mean, this is Rialto in a nutshell, but this corner is like very, very hard to break. And you have few options of dealing with it. You can deal with, with long range hit scan damage or like a sniper like Hanzo or Widow. You can deal with flank plays, maybe controlling the map this way. Uh, you can do it with anchoring on point and threatening this way. Uh, but whatever you do, it's pretty obvious to the defenders what you're doing, where you're rotating. Uh, and it's not very hard to deal with different rotations. It's not hard, especially for this team comp, to threaten here, to threaten here, to threaten here, to threaten here, all at the same time. Because they're all relatively close together. And, and to deny like any uh, flank peaks this way, even though not many people use this in the Overwatch League. It's too exposed. So, inherently, this is a defender-favored map. Even though there's no snipers in play, even though there's no long-range hit scan, stuff like that. Uh, this is a very defender favorite map because of how easy it is to control this corner. So I'm curious to see what dragons will do to really break through this. So, starting off good, denying this high ground. Lee Jagon finds a nice boop, um, and not everyone can stand there anymore. Fuel are answering with a quick rotation through the building and flipping the map. Again, even though they're holding this side of the corner, it's still dragon's job to pull the cart with them. So this is still like... They still need to win this fight in some way, and sometimes that means even pushing back through in order to get the card to move with them. Oh, Sparkle goes down. I would have liked to see more... Like, I... I, I don't even know how, how right I am when it comes to this, because this comp could play very differently in Overwatch League competitive team settings, right? But I would love to see Sparkle disconnect just a little bit more. Instead of being like directly with his team, like being up here and forcing Void to fly onto him or forcing Fleta to come duel him when they have priority positioning. So they have priority positioning because Shanghai needs to move the cart. It's Shanghai's job to do something to dislodge fuel, to move the cart, to do all these things. So when they're in that position, I think Sparkle should have the freedom to be a little bit more selfish to be a little bit more greedy to look for sticky bombs to maybe maybe not hit a flank because this could get him isolated but i don't think he needs to play so safe that his like literally his winston and diva are in front of him and he's risking getting like splash damage from these sticky mines i think he'd be, he'd be playing up here i think he could be flying above these roofs i think he could be baiting fleta to come duel him so that Han hanbin can come answer that and maybe they can 2v1 him uh but i would like to see more priority and better use out of this positioning with more aggressiveness but Fleta is meta and kills everybody. This <laughs> is just very hard to retake. Fuel had to commit cooldowns just to get to the cart, meaning dragons had everything available just to shut them down and, and use their resources to find kills. Just a bit of a snowball there. Fuel coming up with some big ultimates, though. Dragons down three ultimates from that play. Or, sorry, two? Yeah, no, they use mines, too. They use three. Interesting they didn't commit coal, though. That's usually like the first thing we see committed because it comes up so fast. I would love to see more pressure from dragons right now. 
they had like four people on the card for a while and maybe they're playing this to to bait them into open space so that ball has better approaches because ball probably doesn't want to commit up here too much but i think what they could have done is leave echo on cart and have like the remaining five up here potentially even out here scouting with diva or something like that and then have ball ready to slam at this corner or at this corner um, or if they come main obviously that's an even easier engage and then echo just shifts up follows up with sticky bombs on that timing or even from a flank or even from over the roof to back here um, but letting them all the way to the cart i think <sighs> why are they doing this maybe because they know fuel should have an alt economy advantage especially with duplicate coming online that they're playing st strictly to disengage but even with a strict disengage play I think they should be pressuring more forward. I think this is the one thing I would change from Dragon's play, is they should be pressuring forward every time they have control of the objective. Um, and I think this is even more relevant because they're playing ball, and they can't commit as hard to when they finally want to decide to fight, so they need to slowly bleed out something from fuel every step of the way, like here, here, and then here. Don't let them just get to step three right away. Hit them here or here, and then once they come to cart, they're not at full resources. But, we'll see how this works out. Nice little roll through from Fate. Oh, and a nice pick from Lip onto field there. That's huge. So they actually did kind of do what I was talking about. Except they hit uh, this corner instead of this corner. So I didn't see Fate earlier. Uh, but he was set up over here, specifically waiting to roll through. And then we saw that roll through into a slam followed up by Void's Matrix, and I assume uh, Lip was TPing behind them at the same time. I didn't see exactly where he went, but that was a really nice engage. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out. So after all of this happens, so let's go back again. So this is after Fielder goes down. So the slam, the Matrix, where is... Oh, Lip's just on the ground. Okay. I assumed that Lip had like TP'd up here and like killed Fielder while he was up here. So that's a huge pick, right? That's that's your lifeblood uh, if you're fuel. And that means <clears throat> that your opportunity to take or, or win this team fight is a lot shorter than it was before because you don't have the healing to carry you through a longer team fight. And you're probably going to have to use more other resources like ultimates, like primal, like beat to sustain instead of your default healing so what that means from fuel right now is since they just got capitalized on these members being not full hp or some members being out of position like we saw fleta and lip on the inside need to be capitalized on immediately or else fuel will just slowly bleed out this fight so they immediately see fate fearless gets the kill they immediately go for a dupe play because they're saying like okay if we're gonna go we go now um, obviously they don't say those literal words in game, but they probably call it like in engage like right now, right now, go fast, go fast uh, and on specific targets, obviously. So they copy, they kill fate right away. All dragons needs to do right now is live. They killed fielder and fuel has a ton of ultimates coming online. And if you'll want to use those ultimates, that's great. But I think dragons should either try to survive like use whatever is necessary to survive like beat coal sure uh but not try to punish or try to re-engage just yet wait for fuel to play their hand then come back in maybe then with your counter diva bomb play maybe then we built a duplicate maybe then fates back or something like this but trying to go too aggressive right here specifically from lip and from fleta just means because they found nothing right now they just used all of their cooldowns during a time when Fuel was sort of like also using their cooldowns, and notably Copy was still in play. And Fuel is like even more ready to capitalize on these people than they were before. They commit the beat to close it out. All dragons had to do was not commit. They would have gotten the same ultimates out of Fuel. They probably wouldn't have died. To so they Not as many people would have died. Or if they are going to commit to making this play, they need to commit as hard as Fuel are willing to. They need to commit beat and bomb like right away and make this play work. But because they're not at the same level of synergy as Fuel are, at least from what I can tell, it seems like they are less willing to commit to 
individual opportunities. So Fleta and Lip saw what they thought was an opportunity here, and they tried to engage off of that. Not everyone was on the same page. Izayaki was calling, sure, uh, but Lee Jae Gong was not in a position to beat him or wasn't even thinking about beating them. Void wasn't trying to matrix or bomb for them. These kind of things didn't all happen at once. Meanwhile, Sparkle's duplicate uh, is finding value. Meanwhile, they're all rushing a new target and forcing Wraith form and forcing Fleta to back up. Dallas just looking more coordinated again. Ooh, Lee J. God, that's three. That's three times he's died while beating. Oh man, someone's doing laps. Huge bomb. Doesn't find enough though because Hanman answered back. Nice little pick from Fleta that might get them enough space, especially they should be able to take this top building for free now, especially since uh, Fate's been pushing the payload. Again, Fate kind of playing Tracer <laughs> at the moment uh, because Tracer's banned. This is the next best thing. And it is buying time and space for his team. As we can see, instead of playing inside the building now, Dallas is now playing behind this line. Instead of playing up here, now they're back here just because Fate exists. He hasn't even done anything. He just touches the payload and they're like, oh, crap, we need to go deal with this again. Uh, and this is getting space for Shanghai to walk up for free. Yeah, they even tried to, like, soft commit to really force them out. But now, I really like this. Look how fast-paced and coordinated this engages. This is, like, again, one of the better mind plays from Fate and just one of the better coordinated plays from Dragons. We're seeing, we're seeing a copy, minds, coalescence all at the same time. Not only that, it's off of the back of them using cooldowns to get back to this high ground because they chased Fate out. That's good communication from Fate, I assume, calling the use those cooldowns that they were chasing him re-engage call from someone and then all these being used at the same time maybe that was pre-planned maybe not but it's exactly what they need to break through the space primal from fearless is trying to stave off the aggression i don't think fleta wants to be shooting him but he doesn't have much choice it built him a bomb though god echo players work on your damn bombs what the hell is this <laughs> Come on, Fleta. It doesn't even hit Sparkle, and he's, like, trying to go touch it. This is just... Ah, this is unacceptable. If, 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 if Echo players can, like, grind out SIG and just learn, like, six SIG uh, angles and rock timings and six SIG fluxes, they can do better than this on D.Va in the damn finals, too. This is just... This could have been such a good bomb. At the very least, bombing, like here would have demeked the copy from sparkle or stopped this aggression entirely and kept void uh more relevant during the fight but i think what he was going for was a deep bomb to support lips aggression in which case he should have been like his crosshair should never even see the sky it should be like pointed right here and it should drop drop like right here oh goodness i'm, I'm a little bit mad about that one but that's okay or is it okay doa just killed fate Oh, man. So, like, they had such a good thing going. Breaking through the space. They had the mines that zoned the back line. They had uh, Fearless of Primal committed. They were breaking through with Coalescence. Uh, but then they just stopped right here. They hit a brick wall. And then it feels like, okay, they've stopped using stuff. Can we go now? And they kill Fate. And they commit Coalescence. And they're like, okay, we're pushing. Go get them, guys. Ooh, that was a cute bomb. Look at Sparkle! He's been doing his homework. He's been doing Diva Bombs. Maybe that one was lucky, but... <laughs> it was better than Fleta's, I'll tell you that much. Ooh, Void survives? Oh no, Sparkle hits the bridge.
Fate. Fate is literally just being the most annoying thing. And yeah, it doesn't take much more than Jexate to mark him because, like, normally if, like, if Fuel was holding, like, a, up here and Jexate was contesting, like, Fate would take that duel. He would go in, like, boop and slam and try to burn Jexate down. Uh, but because Fuel's right here, he knows he can't do that. He knows someone will just turn. If, at the very least, heal Jexa or ma Matrix his damage, but maybe even, like, commit onto him and punish him for doing that. Interesting Death Blossom. I I mean, it kind of looked like a fat finger. And then... Nice bomb from Hanbin. Oh, Hanbin. If he if, if Hanbin had remeked the other way, he might have killed Lip there. He's not used to the change. Void goes in for the bomb. Not a bad bomb. A lot of space created for Shrag Eye right now. They're running out of ults to close this out. They have duplicate again, though. They need to get something before Sparkle's duplicate comes online. They should be duping right now and pushing. Maybe they don't even need to. Okay, never mind. Good uh, good discipline there. I 100% would have duped and gone deeper. And I would have told the team to just like push with and ignore the payload and try and kill someone and then go back to the payload. But they had enough of an advantage that they didn't need to. They might be giving a soldier a massive visor buff, also a significant echo... Diva dupe nerf. The only thing I could think for soldier, so like they they experimented with like soldiers visor doing headshot, and that was just not okay. Um, but like maybe they just give him. I don't really know because they can't like up his damage numbers, otherwise it would make visor too oppressive. Uh, but maybe they could like, just like rework the ultimate so that it just makes him like reload really fast. Like, if, if Visor just, like, gave him the reload speed that Visor gives him without the lock-on, I think it would be a better ultimate. Because uh, you could still hit headshots and just have, like, infinite ammo for a bit. That would be cool. Um, the other thing I thought of was maybe, like, this would also be oppressive, but, like, what if during TAC Visor your, your Helix Rockets would, like, track uh, to your target and, like, home in on them? That would be cool, but also really oppressive because they do so much damage. Uh, yeah, I don't know how they would buff Soldier... Uh, but for the Eka Diva nu dupe nerf, I would assume what they sh what they should do is limit the ult charge on Echo dupe, and whether that's across the board or specific to certain heroes, I don't know. Um, but I think it's egregious how quickly you can charge a Diva bomb. It's like a guarantee. Like you, even if you're getting targeted by six people, you can like build a Diva bomb before you go to before you lose your mech. They're making it so damage fall off doesn't exist. Like, only for Visor or just in general for Soldier's Gun? Because that's insane. If, like... I mean, the Visor doesn't have infinite range. I think the range is, like, from here to, like... Maybe, like, here? Uh, like, this area on the ground here? Uh, but, yeah, that'd be pretty insane. Uh, anyway, back to the VOD, though. <laughs> Let's keep watching. Dragons again... Ooh, okay, they're going fast. They copied Reaper, though. So, Copy Reaper was very popular in in Korea for a long time. And I think... Shanghai coming out of hundred. there. I think Copy Reaper was so popular because of the slower playstyle. Um, and it was harder to escape Reaper's damage in general. Harder to deal with Death Blossom because Matrix was used for so many things. Um, as well as harder to... What's the word I'm looking for? Like, without a Lucio, you don't have boop and you don't have speed. So it's hard to disengage from it. And it's hard to punish uh, Reaper. It's hard to try and actually get the kill and, like, engage onto him and make him a target. But in, in NA, Copy Diva has been the play for a while now. Ooh, Doa almost gets Sizayaki. Fuel quickly running out of speed here. The beat comes out. It's not going to be enough. Unless Primal gets built or this bomb kills five. Bomb's not going to kill five. It is going to kill Fleta. That one's going to kill five. I remember watching that live now. I completely forgot about that play. That was nuts. The, 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 uh, damn. The, the monkey bubble breaks like a fraction of a second. You know, in your ranked game, when you're screaming at your team, you're like, oh, break bubble, break bubble. This is a team actually listening. Fleta's using his coat, his beam. 
to get the bonus damage on the bubble because it, it affects bubbles when they're below 50 HP as well. And it cost him his life. What actually broke it? Was it like a Lucio damage? Because this is insane. Something broke it. I don't know what. It wasn't Lip. Lip should have been shooting it. Uh, but yeah. Oh my goodness. Maybe it was like Baby Diva Pistol. Maybe it was uh, Lucio's mixtapes flying in. I don't know, but that was that was pretty cool. Alright. One minute on the clock is pretty good for Rialto. This is historically a very hard map to finish out. So not a bad time from Dragons. Uh, definitely happy with that. Ready for battle. Looking at Fuel's defense. Again, similar to Nimbani. Five, Wait, no, sorry. Four, Fuel's attack. Three, uh, similar to Nimbani, I think Fuel's comp is better on defense. Uh, but that being said, this is probably still a 50-50 matchup uh, when they are attacking. Again, we're going to see a lot of fighting around this corner. Ooh, actually, Shanghai fighting way sooner. Look how much more decisive Shanghai looks now after the compared to the first two maps. They're playing around fate a lot better. They're not getting punished for trying to play individually or things like that while still finding value individually. Like, Fleta is still looking for angles and stuff like that, but you don't see him, like, committing to duels at the same time that, like, fate's going in because... All it takes is for Fuel to just decide to ignore Fate and focus Fleta for him to get punished in that situation. So, Dragons are adapting, which is really good to see. This is what you hope to see from a, a tournament finals. That being said, though, they gave up all that space knowing that this engage didn't favor them. And then, yeah, this is just a case of them thinking they could wait a little bit longer wait for their coalescence to come online, and then all of a sudden, Fuel pull the trigger, and they're not ready to deal with it. Fate was posturing just to touch the point, not ready to disengage, and he's there too late. Now he's gonna give Sparkle full ult charge, I guess? Okay, they should have let Sparkle kill that for free, but such mid-max nitpicky stuff. Jexa is tweeting from the payload. Meanwhile, Fuel is taking position. And again, I think it's much easier for Fuel to hold this position. Although, uh, they can't actually take it because Chenghai are already there. Sparkle goes down immediately. This is a case of, it's the flip now. So, like, before it, it was, like, such a case of uh, Fuel just being so much faster than Shanghai. But now, like, between fights, it's back and forth. Both teams are really fast. Really fast, clean engages. Really decisive target calling and stuff like this. Again, Fleta is looking for an aggressive play, but this isn't a solo play like we were seeing before. This is him playing aggressive with his team uh, with a set timing. I think he's still a little bit ahead of the pack. I think if Sparkle were, were paying more attention to Fleta up to this moment, he could have had a chance to punish him. Same with like Hanbin being able to fly up to him, uh, which is what they would have needed to do before this coalescence comes out. Uh, but because they didn't do that, the follow-up is there. They probably overcommit those mines, but the mines haven't been a big difference maker this whole set, so I don't hate it. Alright, now they've only got Beat and Blossom coming up on Bomb. Fuel has a lot of ultimates to use. They'll probably want to open up with either... A copy or maybe a primal if they want to go really aggressive. Yeah, it looks like primal. Yeah. Into coalescence. They're looking for copy to close out the fight or bomb to close out the fight. Beat stabilizes. Void got punished and lost mech. And yeah. Notice how with primal, Fearless did super long range punishing pushes but then as soon as it's running out 
we're tightly grouped again. Back to Payload. It's it's a very different game when Primal or Copy are in are in play, and everyone knows not to try and follow up where Fearless is going because like he can he can go behind enemy lines for a few seconds, but even during Primal he can't stay there. So no one's trying to follow up the space he's creating. They're just waiting to catch whatever sort of claw game prizes he can snatch out of the enemy team. And he brings Void to the payload, he brings Fate to the payload, and that's where they put the majority of their focus. Doa's not trying to push in, Sparkle's not trying to push in until Fate's ready, or not Fate, Fearless is ready to go back in himself. Really nice coordination there, really clean Winston play, obviously, uh, and really patient DPS play from Fuel. This is really showing why, like, Overwatch isn't always about having the, the best six players, but, like, being the best team and being the most coordinated pays off really well. Alright, copy Diva to open this flight. Boosters booped Blue Shoe off the map. Lee J gone is not having a good time. The double bomb. And they land in the exact same place. I wonder if they practice that. I don't think double bomb is, like, amazing, but it is a, it's an interesting play. Um, but obviously, when you are doing it, you need to have a very specific purpose for it. Either you layer them one, and then it blows up, and then the second one comes in, so you buy yourself extra time. Um, or you use it to, to deny completely different areas of the map. So like a bomb here to deny the corner, a bomb up here to deny the high ground would be huge. And then you can commit uh, anywhere you want because you've opened up so much of the map. Um, the only other thing I could think of would be like a bomb to set up a bomb. Where like you're bombing knowing they have... I mean, not for dragons, but knowing they have like a Winston bubble or a beat or something like that that's going to deny it or Wraith or you get all their cooldowns out which again is kind of banking on a lot of value from bomb and then you follow that up with another bomb right after or it's just from making the bomb kind of split in two uh, but if you're doing that if you're doing either of those plays they need to be really well coordinated and they need a very specific target or place in mind for what you're going to punish but despite all that this time that the bomb the bombs the bombs have bought if nothing else uh, has given field an opportunity to find more but it looks like lip finds doa first that Blossom was very ambitious. It was kind of a hero play. But I think the reason Doa went for that play is because they realized they were running out. They used all every ultimate in the game. Uh, so they were running out of gas. And if they didn't win right now, they were going to slowly bleed out because Dragon's Comp is better in neutral by having ball. Uh, and because they have ultimates coming online more. They haven't used as much to deal with what th Fuel was throwing at them. They didn't trade uh, one to one efficiently. Or I should say, Fuel didn't trade one-to-one -one efficiently in terms of ultimates. So, Advantage was slowly swinging in Dragon's favor, and they had a very short window to capitalize on. This is the opposite case. Uh, Dragon's going really aggressive, using two ultimates, not trading out for any ultimates on the side of Fuel, simply trading for position. Now Fuel's going to have a better advantage moving into this fight. It started off with Cole. They know they don't need to finish it out right away because the longer this fight goes, the better it is for them. Or maybe they do want to finish it out right away. Sparkle cleaning up kills. Yeah. Dragons have nothing. Wait. Fleta just copied Winston? Oh, he was getting primal to Africa, I suppose. I didn't even notice. I strongly disagree with that copy. Not only because it was Winston in this composition is very hard unless you are a very good Winston player to find the same value Fearless does. Uh, number two, because the fight was already over. We would love... Maybe he did it just to survive, which... Uh, I don't hate, uh, but if he's doing it just to survive, then he should know not to jump in and feed the enemy ult charge, especially with Primal and stuff like that. Uh, but also... The most important thing is just being ready for the engage when the team is there. And the fact that Fleta... Well, one, like, it's not his fault he got primal. That's that's a good job by Fearless. So it's not his fault he's forced into this position. Uh, but his choice to handle it the way he did... So yeah, he copied to stay alive. Because he was going to die to Winston here. He was going to get juggled. So he copies Winston. Winston. He jumps in. To six members. 
He primals to give a little bit more ult charge to the enemy. And then he dies after that. So, it, and only after, like, at the moment he's dying is his team even close to being there for him. Like, Fate's not even here yet. So it's just really awkward timing from Fleta. And I think this is showing how much control he has in this team, where I think Fleta's decisions matter the most for Shanghai. And if the team isn't ready or willing to play around them, he's not going to find value from them. He, but he's still expecting the team to play around him and stuff like this. So that could be a communication issue. That could be just a synergy issue. This could be uh, Fleta just having an overambitious play. Like maybe it's just a misplay and it's nothing else. But uh, from what I've seen in general too, is just their DPS players have a lot of priority in terms of their playmaking, which in general doesn't suit this composition. And it's why I think Fuel looks so good in the, in the first two maps especially. But in this case, Fleta finds too early. So during this engage, uh, Jexy is just caught out. And then Sparkles here and just loses the duel. So Sparkles should win that duel. Uh, I didn't see what his health that was actually, but assuming they were both at full health, full resources, Sparkle should win that duel because Fleta uh, just used his beam on on Jexit, but I'm assuming Sparkle didn't have full HP there. And I'm guessing Spar the reason Sparkle was split, by the way, uh, was because he was so close to dupe, he was trying to be here catch the opponents running back from Fuel's Engage, be able to copy a D.Va, keep them here for longer, finish them off. And now... Hmm. Kind of lacking direction, Fuel's Engage is here. Which is, again, just uncharacteristic. Oh no, Hanbin flies off into the, into the lake. Or is this an ocean? Into the river, the ocean. I, I don't get these ultimates. I don't I didn't get the copy bomb play. I didn't get this coalescence. Fuel's getting a little flustered. It looks like they're having a much worse read on when flights are are good for them to take. This is starting to look better. Anytime they have a primal, they always look good because Fearless does so much. Yeah, Void should die there. Tanks down, now they move forward. Copy Moira does nothing. Not in this comp, at least. Cleaned up. So yeah. I mean, maybe they were just hiccuping there. Maybe they didn't have a good read on enemy alter economy. Uh, maybe they just got a little bit flustered and got ahead of themselves. But that was a little bit uncharacteristic for Fuel to be that... Uh, on the back foot for a lot of that. TP engaged very early and overlapped with Coalescence. I don't necessarily understand that. Bomb play from Hanbin. Hanbin's gonna just die here. I think this might be why Rush said Ball was like the the dagger in their back. Because like anytime they go for these all-in plays and Fate just touches the payload... One, it causes Fuel to make a split decision. So Hanbin was going aggressive here. The team decided to kite back for Fate. Fate is always going to live if they try to focus him, unless he misplays. Uh, or unless... Because they don't have CC. Uh, so unless something crazy happens, uh, Fate is going to live when they put their attention on him. But because they're on attack, Fuel is, and they need to push the payload, they kind of need to deal with him whether they like it or not. But if they only, if they only half commit to sending people back, um, then they aren't able to punish him enough to warrant him actually leaving the payload for a meaningful amount of time. This decision to push away fate is contrasting Hanbin's decision to commit alts. Um, and this is like the first map we've seen a lot of this indecision happen for the fuel where normally they're always on the same page. Uh, and I think this case, because it was overtime, because it was potential last fight scenario, they got a little bit split and Hanbin ended up going down. Oh, but... Even after Han been going down, so Fate going down is is one thing, but like Void and Izayaki here overextending, Lip, like what is Lip doing out here? 
like they know they're not engaging around fate like fate is just taking their attention and that's that's their engage tool but they're not relying to play around fate they shouldn't be going this aggressive expecting fate to like hit a slam or something uh, and they should be playing around their ultimates more but it might be one of those situations where they felt they needed to win the fight right away they needed to capitalize on Hanbin's death uh, they didn't want people to be able to use their ults but they weren't quick enough are they gonna touch? Fate's gonna touch. Oh, but then they're just gonna get off. So, this this map's looked pretty messy from both teams, to be honest, compared to the other ones. Uh, and it's been looking like a little bit of a story of who it's it, it's, it's 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 the same story of who's gonna make the first mistake. Uh, but this time, it's like who's gonna not commit the hardest. It's a lot of both teams going fast and hard or, or and not being ready for that level of aggression from either side. Uh, but it's also people misreading the situation and some people over committing and some people under committing. So like we saw again with Hanbin's bomb, he over committed, the rest of his team uh, retreated. Then when fate rolled through the team, all of dragons, notably lip over committed when they shouldn't have in the first place, uh, but also when other teammates couldn't follow them up. So, Oh man, this is such a a tough matchup, and it seems like Fuel's gonna lock in Ball. No, not for this map. Uh, Fuel Fuel does end up swapping to Ball eventually, and I assume it it is for that map control. They're coming out now. What is Doa doing? Oh no. <laughs> he, he didn't see Lip there and then obviously just TP'd directly into his LOS. Uh, unlucky more than anything, but we haven't seen a lot of aggressive TPs like that from Doa. Usually he's been playing more with the team and sure he'll look for backline TPs, but not to immediately go aggressive. And I don't think that was the case here either. He was looking to get position so that if dragons drop here or engage around here he's ready to follow up inside or ready to follow up on the ground here he wasn't even thinking about shooting anyone but yeah good kill from lip good fast aggression from dragons try and get some more if they can oh my goodness slam plus damage and the thing is here, because, like, without Tracer or Sombra or Ball in Fuel's comp, they've got no choice but to run this, like, front to back. They've got no choice but to put their tanks on payload, have their DPS, maybe look for some stuff, maybe look for a TP, uh, and have their supports support from behind. But, like, it's not until, like, you round this corner that you can really open up the map. And unless Fuel opts for, like, a full team-wide rotation, which, again, uh, is pretty exposed, pretty easy to read, very easy for Dragons to just, okay, now we're fighting at this choke. Um, this is a very hard spot to cross, actually. Especially now with alt economy slowly ticking in Dragon's favor. Fielder's gonna have his Coalescence. That might be enough to break them through. Um, but unless they find immediate value from Coalescence into Copy, then Dragons are gonna have ults online. Okay, or Sparkle just kills Fleta, because why not? What was Fleta looking for? Oh, wow, I just completely got caught up. Yeah, this is the danger of holding this close, is not as much space as guaranteed. So if you're holding this line, uh, sure, you can, like, be here. You can see most of their threats, but, like, you, you're not ready for this. You're not ready. Again, no one's going to be doing this because it takes too long, but you're not ready for this flank, these kind of things. Whereas if you're holding this corner, like I said before, the reason this corner is so popular is because it's easy to respond to all these different things. Because it's basically, you could stand here and see all every choke that's that's a threat to you. Uh, versus even the verticality threat of here not being as obvious to Fleta in that situation. But overall, nice play from Sparkle. Opens up the fight. Followed up with Coalescence. Coalescing ball isn't great, but <laughs> not many other choices. Obviously, having Fate to die on point there is huge for dragons. Because it 
you want Fate to be the last one dead if you're resetting for a team fight because he's going to get back the fastest, obviously. Uh, and it means Fleta and Lip and Void can maintain some positioning to potentially get some poke in or go for a faster engage like we're going right here. This is really cute from Dragons. I like this engage. But not clear enough target focus, not and fuel being at full resources. Again, every single member has a get out of jail free card. So they don't find any kills from this. And this is kind of that case I was talking about where dragons, they punch really hard. But if if fuel can dance around that engage, they'll be able to counter hit back and re-engage with stuff like copy bomb, with stuff like coalescence, with stuff like primal. Fearless goes down, but traded for fate. That's not bad. Bomb is decent, clears the mines. Second bomb is huge! There's a double bomb play. And yeah, it's overtime, so dragons are just dying on point. I mean, sure. Cap first point. I don't think that was necessary because of the overtime spawns, but I can understand that in the moment. Primal to open things up. Sparkle going down. There's a lot of first death echoes. I think Fleta loves taking those duels. It's just he's been really wary of it, obviously, this round because of how um, responsive Fuel are. That is such an unlucky boop. I'd be slamming my keyboard if I was Doa. Did you guys see that? That was... <laughs> <laughs> Tragic. Tragic. Yeah, I mean, you don't account for that happening. That's so unlucky. That's probably going to end the the attack. I mean, unless they can build up a primal. Nah. Yeah, ults, lucky boop, good kill on uh, Sparkle early. Nice job from Dragons. Um, I'm curious to see how Fleta continue plays, continues to play this series. Because on one hand, like that kill on Sparkle was like huge value. And you're not going to find that unless you play a very aggressive playstyle and very uh, flanky playstyle. But on the other hand, like it's kind of been a 50-50 play for him where either he gets an immediate kill, like we saw first fight Li Zhang, or we saw right there, or he just gets punished for no reason by trying to maintain aggression for too long. Um, I don't know if this is something he needs to change as a player or if this is something his team needs to play around more. Uh, it's kind of hard to say in the moment without knowing like comms and stuff like that, but it's definitely something that needs to be tweaked to be more consistent because uh, it's not good enough to say, like if you were playing Tracer, it's not good enough to say, okay, I win like 50% of my duels, uh, but 50% of the time I'm just dead. That's not good enough. You're not doing enough on Tracers. And it's kind of the same for Echo in this comp. You need to be doing more. You need to be leveraging more poke damage. If you're not finding those duels, you need to be leveraging more uh, active threat in team fights and making sure you're ready to follow up instead of looking for these off-angle sticky bombs and flanks and duels more of the time. But when it does work out, it really works out. Like we saw that kill on Sparkle just now. Where is Fate going? Where is Fate right now? Okay, he's already over here. Now they're going to put Fate on cart and have everyone else take high ground? Or they have both tanks on cart, okay. Fuel's not even really holding high ground, so this is fine. Notice how everyone's just ignoring Fate? It's pretty funny because like in like in your average ranked game, I'm sure like people this is like why ball is so good in ranked in a lot of levels is because he'll go in and slam like this and then one or two or three people will turn around and he'll just roll away and then the rest of his team will come in and kill you. Uh, at least a proficient team will come in and kill you. Uh, but in this, Doa doesn't even care that he just got slammed and he's getting shot at by a ball. He's just like, okay, 
I have Moira healing me. Oh, maybe I don't. Never mind. Uh, but they don't even try to think about Bald. I'm assuming this is a coaching decision as well, uh, as well as just player mentality, of just ignoring fate as much as you can and focusing on the, the bigger team fight because that's what Fuel's been really proficient in the past couple maps is winning not only very decisively, but also like these extended long back and forth team fights. They've come out ahead the majority of them, I want to say. That's not based on any numbers though. That's kind of just a feeling. So it's hard to say for sure. But yeah, like, see, this is Fleta getting caught off again. Getting a little bit isolated. Instead of absorbing this pressure and playing more for his team, he opts to stay... I mean, th okay, no, this is him not knowing where Sparkle was and getting beamed down. Okay, so that's not that bad. But still, if you're moving defensively like this, you should be thinking more conservatively about your space, not making yourself as big of a target. Given that there's no hitscan in this meta, typically being up in the sky is... A good safe space when you're out of diva range that kind of thing uh but obviously the enemy echo needs to be accounted for for those situations fate is uh otf he's on the flank he's getting zapped by fielder See how dragons get in. They've got a lot of ults on the table. Both teams do. Yeah, Fuel not afraid to just leave the objective. Fate wants to go push, but he knows that if he takes himself out of the fight, his team will have a really tough time getting back in. Okay, Diva Bombs exchanged, Mines used, Primal used, Fearless lives. Diva Bomb kills Izayaki. This is looking like Fuel's fight. Both teams have pretty much used most of their ults. Now both teams are using Blossom, the beat that was going to be the difference maker. Copy Diva is probably too late in the fight to do anything. There's not enough team saints to support him. He's going to get a bomb, sure, but it's not going to mean much. And the baby's going to die. And then... I mean, it's going to last a while, I suppose, but yeah, this is Fuel's fight. Unless they really mess something up. <laughs> all right nice 3-1 for fuel and this was like the turning point for shanghai this is where shanghai decided to go ultra instinct for the next few maps um but i think it's been two and a half hours and i'm already starting to lose my voice i think for today i'm gonna call it there we're gonna call this part one of two uh for the finals review stream we're gonna cover these last three maps tomorrow uh, where after I can rest my voice a little bit and really get into things. Um, but so far, the tale of these first four maps have been Fuel look more coordinated and more decisive. Dragons look more explosive, but are kind of like playing a 50-50 game, where if their initial engage works out, or if Fleta's aggression in particular works out, they can snowball off that pretty well. But if they don't find a big enough advantage, or if Fuel... Even better yet for Fuel, if they're planning around their engage, they just get snuffed out, they get danced around, they get counter-engaged, all these kind of things. So, um, I don't know in depth, I only watched the broadcast for these last couple of maps. Oh, I mean, for all the maps, really. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly where this series is going to go, if we're going to see many major changes. Um, but I'm excited to watch the remainder of this series. Um, sorry, I'm not going to do it today, but thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream today. Um, if you're interested in checking in with me tomorrow, I'll be back around the same time, 1 p.m. EST tomorrow to finish off this series. Be sure to follow the channel, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff uh, to get notified when we go live tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, until then, uh, I'm calling it now, so peace out. And if you're, if you're an Echo player, go practice your Diva Bombs.